ability to launch targeted precision strikes on separate locations on any country's soil. The technology deployed is far more advanced than the traditional ballistic missiles which can only carry a single warhead. This is generally believed globally now to be one of the most lethal warheads and with this indigenous achievement, Bharat and DRDO have entered an elite and very select club of nations and organizations who have successfully developed these advanced missile systems. The US, France, Britain, Russia and China are among the few who have done it. Now, while there is no official range ascribed to it, the capability is said to have a range of about 5,000 kilometers, which means that the Agni-5 can bring almost all of Asia in its striking range, including the northern belts of China. And it is a matter of huge pride, ladies and gentlemen, that we have achieved it on our own, indigenously, on our own. And I have always said, as we move to a 5 and 10 trillion economy with the highest growth rates in the world, we must have a very, very strong lethal military capability matching or more than China. Look at the strategic capability that this adds to the prowess of our sophisticated defense systems. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a new level of preparedness that India has for a new kind of warfare which we are preparing for. Because the technology which is being used in the Agni-5 is for the preparedness of striking multiple targets at once exactly in consonance with what we saw in December when we tested the same system on the Akash missile. What are we doing here, viewers? We as a country are increasing many-fold our strategic depth, our geopolitical depth, our military and defence capability, our offensive and defensive positions. There is a thought-out pattern to what is going on, ladies and gentlemen. There is a loaded strategic preparedness in the works. That is what it is telling me. The Agni-5 not only arms us, the Agni-5 complicates it for our enemies. Because this missile can penetrate ballistic missile defences through acts of deceit. Through high-speed entry and re-entry and simultaneous strikes, which means that the entire threat matrix in any situation can be conquered whether the enemy is singular or multiple. <coughs> you can have multiple targets, multiple geographies. The multiple warheads capability is also a solid siren and a warning to China and Pakistan in any situation, in any era of time, that if they even think of joining hands against Bharat, with the Agni-5 in our fold, China's missile... Welcome back, viewers. Now, amid the ongoing war with Ukraine, Muslims, Muslims in the Republic of Bashkortostan, Russia, welcomed Islam's holy fasting month of Ramadan with mass prayers. The sacred month, which sees those observing abstain from food and water from sunrise to sunset, marks a period of religious reflection, family get-togethers and giving across the Muslim community. In the Republic of Bashkortostan, Russia, the advent of Islam's sacred month of Ramadan was commemorated with widespread congregational prayers. The mosques in the region's capital, Ufa, are overcrowded, a local imam said. During Ramadan, those observing typically break their fast with a date and water, following the tradition set by Prophet Muhammad. Мы работаем во время Рамазана не, по, не как обычно, мы работаем, получается, чтобы люди могли к нам прийти. Бывает, что места свободных нет, но как бы бывает семьями приходят обедать, бывает гостей приглашают на 30, 40, 50 человек. The sacred month, which sees those observing abstain from food and water from sunrise to sunset, marks a period of religious reflection. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar. The month cycles through the seasons and the months in the Gregorian calendar. Agency Report, Republic TV. 
An American man was convicted of murder and other charges for attacking two young American women in southern Germany last summer and pushing them into a ravine, fatally injuring one of them. He has now been sentenced with life term in prison. The Kempton State Court convicted a 31-year-old man of murdering two young American women in southern Germany. Das Schulgericht hat den Angeklagten zu lebenslanger Freiheitsstrafe verurteilt wegen Mordes und Vergewaltigung bezüglich der Getöteten und wegen versuchten Mordes und gefährlicher Körperverletzung bezüglich des überlebenden Opfers. Hier war nur eine lebenslange Freiheitsstrafe zu verhängen, äh, da eben Mord. Presiding Judge Christoph Schubacher determined that the defendant bears particularly severe guilt. Meaning that he likely won't be eligible for release after 15 years, as is usually the case in Germany. Ich habe aber entgegen unseres Antrages die besondere Schwere der Schuld gesehen. Was heißt das für unsere Mandanten? Er kann nicht, wie sonst ohne der Feststellung der besonderen Schwere der Schuld, grundsätzlich nach 15 Jahren entlassen werden, sondern es wird überhaupt erst nach 15 Jahren festgestellt, wie lange er noch seine Freiheitsstrafe verbüßen muss, ehe die Schuld gesühnt ist, sofern man überhaupt von natürlich einer Sühne in einem solchen Fall sprechen kann. Prosecutors have said that the suspect met the two female tourists, aged 21 and 22, by chance on a hiking path and lured them off the trail. Defendants in the German legal system do not formally enter pleas to charges, but the suspect admitted to the charges when his trial opened on February 19. In line with Germany privacy laws, the court did not identify either the perpetrator or the victim. Agency Report, Republic TV. Time to slip in a very short break. Coming up after the break, BJP's Central Election Committee meets for the second time. Sources say the second list of candidates to be out in 48 hours. NSA Ajit Jawal calls on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu amid Gaza war. Both sides discuss efforts to release hostages and issue of humanitarian crisis. Amity faculty have filed over 2100 patents. Yet another reason why Amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements.
and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Amit Shah said it to me on the 7th of March. And tonight, the breaking news is that the Citizenship Amendment Act, the CAA, has been notified. I welcome it wholeheartedly. And in this time, I want to begin by saying that we must not give in. We must not give in this time to the Shaheen Bagh type polarizing threats. And we must not allow, we must not allow anyone to spread the falsehood that a few persecuted Hindus, a few terrorized Buddhists, a few persecuted Sikhs, and a few persecuted Christians from Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, where they are persecuted, where they are terrorized, that they're coming to India will put Indian secularism at. Morning, you're watching uh, the Morning Express. I'm Samiksha Srivastava. Our top focus remains the CAA rollout by the central government, tracking all the reactions coming in on CAA, starting first with the top headlines uh, on the Morning Express uh, this Tuesday morning. Its official centre announces CAA implementation just weeks ahead of polls, uh, sets up portal for registration. Political slugfest over CA rollout uh, ensues. Opposition questions timing of move, calls it a poll gimmick ahead of grand finale. BJP finalizes Andhra packed out of total uh, 25 Lok Sabha seats. TDP to contest on 17 seats, uh, BJP 6 and Jansena party 2. BJP Central Election Committee meets uh, for the second time. Sources uh, suggest that the second list of candidates to be out in the next 48 hours. Reports say a first batch of Indian military personnel manning operations of a helicopter in Maldives depart from island nation. Move comes after President uh, Muzu's May 10th ultimatum. NSA Ajit Doval calls on Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu amid Gaza war. Both sides uh, discuss efforts to release hostages and issue of humanitarian crisis as well. Focus, uh, the Citizenship Act has finally become a reality. The Modi government has made the historic announcement just weeks ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Uh, it has delivered one of its biggest poll promise four years after the bill was passed. The opposition, meanwhile, uh, has questioned the timing of the announcement and has called for a protest once again. But the question is, why is the opposition spreading a false narrative despite government's assurance? And why is the opposition having a meltdown as well? Here's a report with those details. Four years after the bill was passed, the game-changer citizenship law is now a reality. The Modi government made the historic announcement just weeks before the Lok Sabha elections. It delivered one of its biggest poll promise. CAA is the law of the country, it is a fool, it is a fool, it is a fool, it is a fool, it is a fool. और इस चुनाव के पहले हो इस चुनाव के पहले होगा ये बहुत बड़ी बात कही आज गृह मंत्री जी ने बहुत बड़ी बात हम सबके सामने कही प्रणव जी तालियां बज गई कोई धमाका नहीं ये बात मैं दस बार बता चुका हूँ नहीं नहीं मगर आप चुनाव के पहले सीए लागू होगा इस देश का कानून है इसको कोई नहीं रोक सकता सेलिब्रेशंस ब्रोक आउट इ even as protests erupt against CAA in Assam, security stepped up in Shaheen Bagh. <laughs> 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 
the Union Home Ministry has cleared the air once again amid fears of deportation of Muslim immigration. The center has stated clearly that both the CAA and NRC have nothing to do with deportation. It goes on to say that CAA will not affect any Indian citizen, including Muslims. The opposition has questioned center's move, alleging it's a bid to polarize polls. Rules notification में अगर हम देखेंगे कि ये डिप्रेस कर रहा है लोगों का अधिकार को, हम जब रूल्स निकालेंगे, हम उसको स्टडी करके जो बताना है काल बताएंगे। लेकिन मैं आज बोल दिया कि ये बीजेपी का इलेक्शन पब्लिसिटी है, नथिंग इस दिन। Amisha is known for making such provocative statements. Amisha is known for provoking people and pitting against one section against another. That is what he wants at the time of elections. There should be communal tensions, conflicts in the country. It is a discriminatory. And of course, uh, on the basis of religion, citizen amendment back act is going to be implemented. With the biggest reform now a reality, why is opposition having a meltdown? All right, so CA rules notified. Meanwhile, American singer uh, Maddie Milwin spoke exclusively uh, with Republic's uh, editor, uh, with Republic's uh, Niranjan Narayan, Narayan Swami on the significance of implementation of Citizenship Act. Uh, Here is an exclusive snippet of that conversation. So we have a very special guest joining us on Republic TV this morning. Her name is Mary Milliban and she's an American singer. Mary, good morning. And, good morning, uh, Narayan. Good morning. And... Uh, of course, the headline in India is the CAA. And there was a very unusual tweet of support that came in from outside of India. Mary is in Arizona, America this morning. And she tweeted this morning saying, CAA is a pathway towards peace. She said, this is a pathway towards peace. It's a true act of democracy. She also said, as a Christian woman of faith and global advocate for religious freedom, I applaud the Modi-led government announcing today the implementation of the Citizenship Amendment Act, now granting Indian nationality to persecuted non-Muslim migrants, Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists, and Parsis from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. She also went on to thank the Prime Minister, uh, the Home Minister, and the government for uh, what she called compassionate leadership, and most importantly, for upholding religious freedom in welcoming those persecuted. Mary, uh, why did you tweet that? Well, first, good morning to you and hello to all the Republic TV family. You know, I tell you, it's a very important time in the country to speak truth to power, as I say. And I tell you, as India is experiencing, the United States is experiencing, many countries across the world are experiencing certainly a re-election. Uh, and so these are times where it's important for uh, truth to be magnified and, and the important issues of, of the important issues that are affecting the world to be discussed. And certainly religious freedom uh, is one of the most important issues affecting the world. Uh, India is experiencing that, certainly the United States and areas across the world. And so uh, I have followed certainly this conversation uh, between administrations here in the United States as it relates to uh, the Citizenship Amendment Act. Uh, mm -hmm. And what is important uh, in the context of democracies, you know, democracies are the beacon of hope, the beacon of freedom to the world. The United States and India, the two largest and oldest democracies together, uh, we collectively are the beacon of hope and freedom to the world. And so I think this is a really important step. Uh, certainly people can say, well, you know, the prime minister was making it in light of the, the timing of the re-election, and that could be the case. But I think it's more important that the prime minister, the home minister, and the Indian government are setting a tone for what is going forward as the prime minister approaches a third term. I think that really is the more important energy. And so to have this as an important step, uh, embracing the third term of the prime minister, setting a precedent for what India will be as it relates to uh, welcoming those who have been persecuted because of religion, I think it's very important. I think it's a smart, strategic, uh, very compassionate and bold move by the prime minister and the Indian government. How do you think the world will look at this uh, move by the Indian government? America, you're sitting well, in America. How does how will the American government, for example, look at it? Well, you know, uh, our our government certainly, um, regardless of politics or party, the government should look at this as a positive step. 
Uh, again, the United States and India as democracies collectively in relationship, we are the beacon of hope, the beacon of freedom to the world. And so it's my hope yeah. that uh, the United States looks at this move, a strategic move by the prime minister as a positive move. Uh, we are seeing the rise of religious persecution all across the world. And, yes. and no one no one should be persecuted because of their faith, the God that they want to serve. And I say that as a Christian woman, you know, I say that living in America where we we are grateful, certainly, for religious freedom. And so I hope that the, the president, I certainly hope that the, the current administration and those coming uh, in after November, who, whoever that will be, uh, will look to this as a positive move for who we are who we say we are as a democracy. That's America, that's India, and that's democracies across the world. Yeah. Mary, uh, you know, this is specifically to the persecuted minorities from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And I've even seen a recent report uh, from the U.S. Home Department that spoke about how religious minorities are persecuted in Pakistan and Afghanistan. There's a report. Of course, we've reported it extensively. We don't need any proof. But it's a fact that uh, Christians... Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Parsis, Jains, any minority for that matter in Pakistan or Bangladesh or Afghanistan, they're targeted. Uh, from a humanitarian perspective, uh, you know, what's your take on it? And how do you look at it as, 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 as just a, a citizen of the world? Sure. Thank you for asking that. You know, Narajan, we are all God's children. You know, we are we are one human race, you know, that that motto that was shared in the G20 summit held in India, you know, one earth, one family, one future. When you look at the world as one family, when you look at the world as as one human race, uh, then even with the difference of religion, there should be a compassion. There should be a sensitivity to how those uh, who are being persecuted persecuted because of their faith are being treated. So we cannot turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to the evils of persecution across the board, but specifically religious persecution. Yes. And we all have to be accountable. You know, we have to keep our leaders accountable when we see the rise of religious persecution, whether within our countries or outside of our borders. We have a responsibility uh, as, as one family to be good neighbors and to take care of each other. And so I think it's very important that uh, the world uh, joins forces with the prime minister, the home minister, India, in this, uh, this charge to fight against religious persecution, to stand uh, as a country that welcomes those who are persecuted and to make it known that, that we're one yeah. family and, and we care about each other in that. Yeah. Uh you know, in India, of course, for political reasons, uh, you have the opposition uh, calling it anti-Muslim, for example. There are many parties that call it that. And it's a domestic issue that we will deal with. But my question to you is also from the prism of uh, those countries that essentially don't like the Modi government. Let me, for example, give you an, uh, a headline from uh, the Al Jazeera today, which, uh, which read and it said, India implements anti-Muslim citizenship law weeks before elections. Now, there's a spin, right? Of course, the Western media has uh, a bias towards the Indian government. Uh, what do you make of such headlines and such uh, Western media narrative that is spinning a humanitarian approach as anti-Muslim, for example? Sure. Thanks for the question. Well, personally, you know, it's not new news to us. I live in America and we I deal with the Western media every day. We all do. And so yes. uh, many times, you know, the media in totality likes to put their own spin on truth uh, as a way to persuade voters or persuade uh, people against the truth. And so in this regard, I will say, look, uh, there's nothing anti-Muslim about what the prime minister and the Indian government have done. If anything, they've taken a bold step and one of the first of many countries who should uh, in welcoming those who are persecuted. And I would just say to the Western media or those media outlets that want to try to spin a headline because they're anti-Modi, the truth is Prime Minister Modi is going to win a third term and everyone should just get on the bus, get on board, because the prime minister will be reelected. He is going to be the next prime minister, and he is setting the right tone for what needs to happen across the world for religious persecution. Uh, it is my hope that certainly the current president, uh, it's no secret who I'm supporting in the November election, and I'm quite certain if, if, the, if President Trump is reelected, uh, mm -hmm. who was 
a, a strong leader for religious freedom uh, during his four years in office. But it's my hope that the current president, the next president, and those leaders across the world uh, follow suit with what Prime Minister Modi has done in the context of welcoming those who have been persecuted because of their faith. So, you know, to the media, they can spend whatever they like, but the truth will set everybody free. And we know the truth. So, yeah. You know, despite despite this narrative setting, which which is uh, of course motivated, uh, the prime minister has uh, huge support, global support. I mean, uh, you're an example. You're sitting in America. There's no reason why you should be vocal about it. You've met him a couple of times. What is it that? And then we know that he's coming back to power. I mean, that's the mood on the ground. Uh, what makes you believe in him and his leadership? Well, you know, now that I have met the prime minister and had uh, some brief time with him, uh, I'm, a, I'm a great admirer of the prime minister. He certainly, as you know, he's a man of the people because uh, he's one of the people. His humble beginnings and the rise of his leadership certainly uh, in India speaks for itself. Uh, but he's the right leader for the right time. I think that's very important when you assess what's happening in the world. Certainly the United States, India, we are our countries that are so important to the stability, the economic stability um, of the world. And so uh, I think that you have to just appreciate uh, the timing. Uh, and so I just believe, you know, Prime Minister Modi is the right leader at the right time in India and the right time in the world. And, you know, Again, I, I know that uh, there's opposition always, you know, in, in, in any country or government. But I think what's important is you have to appreciate and identify uh, the right leaders for the right timing for the people that you serve. And Prime Minister Modi, hands down, is the right leader for the Indian people uh, at this time and going forward. And, and that has that that's irrefutable. You can see the policy that the prime minister has put forward that is certainly advancing India as an economic power, that's advancing India as a competitor in technology, that's advancing India as a promoter of women and young girls, uh, that's advancing India in infrastructure. You certainly, the, the headlines and, and the news about uh, the advancements in highways and, and certainly infrastructure yes. there. So I could go on and on and on, but the truth and the facts, the agenda, the policies speak for itself. And that that's irrefutable. And so, again, you know, I'm pretty bold about this because I see what's happening in the world in my capacity as an artist. And I I believe that we should get behind leaders for the right time. And, and Prime Minister Modi is the right leader for the right time. Very interesting uh, perspective uh, from someone who's living in America. Uh, Mary, thank you for speaking to Republic TV today. It's good talking to you. It's great talking to you. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. So on that note, uh, we are heading into a very short break. Coming up on the other side, we will get you inside details of uh, the CEC meet of the BJP that was held late last night. Uh, second list of the BJP set to be released uh, today. So inside details of uh, the CEC meet, uh, BJP having finalised the Andhra Pradesh Pact. And BJP Central Election Committee meets for the second time, sources suggest second list of candidates to be out in the next 48 hours. Amity faculty have filed over 2100 patents. Yet another reason why Amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements.
very very happy to announce that Neva Bhopal Health Insurance has come on board as Republic TV's studio model. Neva Bhopal Health Insurance is the fastest growing company among standalone health insurance players in India. It has also provided health insurance coverage to 1.1 crore people in India and settled over 15 lakh claims processing one claim every 60 seconds. So we are delighted to be partnering with them. आप तो चलते Now the Supreme Court has come down heavily on the State Bank of India over delay in disclosure of details on electoral bonds. The five judge uh, bench of the Supreme Court has asked the National Bank to apprise it, about, apprise it about the steps taken on disclosure of electoral bonds, asking it to share the bond and donor details uh, by today itself, uh, which is four weeks away. For the polls, uh, the question is why is the State Bank of India seeking an extension when it comes on the disclosure on electoral bonds? The Supreme Court has pulled up the State Bank of India over delay in disclosure of electoral bonds data while rejecting the bank's extension plea. In a scathing observation, the top court questioned the National Bank on what steps been taken in the last 26 days to divulge the details of poll funding by the political parties. The Supreme Court has asked SBI to share details with the Election Commission by tomorrow. The poll body has been asked to publish the details on its website by 5 p.m. on March 15th. We direct that ECI shall compile the information and publish the details in its official website no later than by by 15 March by 5 p.m. on 15 March 2024. The court has warned that it will initiate contempt proceedings against SBI if it does not furnish the details by tomorrow the opposition has targeted center alleging it poses a threat to democracy ye to sbi dwara 4.5 mahine mangne ke baad saaf ho gaya ki modi sarkar apne kaale kartuton ko पर्दा डालने का कोशिश कर रहे हैं तो मुझे उम्मीद है कि देश की जनता जानेगी कि इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड्स बीजेपी पे जो आए हैं या अन्य दलों पे जो आए हैं वो किन किन के माध्यम से पहुंचा है सबसे ज्यादा इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड्स किस पार्टी ने लिए जाहिर सी बात है वो ये नहीं लोगों को ये नहीं इन्फॉर्म करना चाहते हैं कि एक पर्टिकुलर पोलिटिकल पार्टी ने कितने बॉन्ड लिए और एस पे कंट्रोल किसका है मेरा तो नहीं है कांग्रेस का नहीं है इंडिया लायंस का नहीं है जिसपे एस बी आई का कंट्रोल है उन्हीं को बचाने की कोशिश होगी और क्या होगा विथ ट्रांसपेरेंसी इन पोल फंडिंग नीड ऑफ दी आर वाई इज एस बी आर सीकिंग मोर टाइम Now, as uh, the politics over Sandesh Kali uprising uh, rages on, the top court has refused to entertain West Bengal government's petition that challenged the Calcutta High Court's directive for a CBI inquiry into Sandesh Kali incident that involves an attack on ED officials on 5th of March. Nonetheless, uh, the apex court has now moved the High Court's criticisms of uh, the state police. Uh, more on that in this next report. Amid the escalating political turmoil in Sandesh Kali The Apex Court has rejected West Bengal's plea against CBI probe into the attack on ED officials However the top court expunged the high court's remarks against the state police machinery In the hearing SC questioned why Shah Jahan Sheikh's arrest was delayed by the state government But Mamata's government remains defiant. 
The Mamata government further alleged that Calcutta High Court failed to look into the facts on Sandesh Kali. The Calcutta High Court had previously observed that the state police was playing hide and seek in the matter of handing Shah Jahan to CBI. As the political firestorm grows, the West Bengal police lati charged the ABVP Assam unit who staged a demonstration in Siliguri to protest against the Sandesh Khali horror. With multiple setbacks, is Mamta government running out of options? And why is TMC still backing a Mafia Dawn? Bureau Report, Republic TV. We are heading to a very short break. Coming up on the other side, uh, we will get you the latest on the CEC meet that was held of the BJP last night. Uh, the second candidate's list uh, likely to be released uh, today itself by the Central, by the BJP. And uh, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, out of a total of 25 Lok Sabha seats, uh, TDP likely to contest on 17 seats, BJP 6 and Jan Sena party on 2 seats. BJP Central Election Committee meets for the second time. Sources suggest a second list of candidates will be out in the next 48 hours. Hey, आप एक दिन में सबसे ज़्यादा रुपयों का लेनदेन कितना किया होगा? आई लाख तो ढाई लाख में दो लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ये लोग थेले में लेके जाती हो पैसे? नमस्कार um, मेरा नाम उनिमा देवनाथ दास है मेरा समूह का नाम है गोपाल गोविंद मैं त्रिपुरा राज्य से हूं गोपाल गोविंद हां सर हम्म मैं 10 साल से मेरा समूह से जुड़ा हूं मैं जब भी मैं समूह से जोड़ा नहीं था तो मेरा फैमिली का इतना इनकम नहीं था तो मैं फैमिली चला सकती मेरे पति भी बेकार थे मेरे बेटी भी बहुत तबीयत खराब रहता था तो मैंने समूह से से चार पांच बार में प्राय पांच लाख रुपया लोन लेके मैं मेरे पति को एक किराने की दुकान करने स्थापित कर दिया तो बाद में मुझे बैंक शुकी और बिजनेस करेस्पोंडेंस शुकी का काज करने के लिए मौका मिला तो एनआरएल में माध्यम से प्रशिक्षण लेके मैं आनंदनगर बैंक ऑफ इंडिया ब्रांच में अभी बैंक शुकी काज कर रहा हूं तो मैंने बैंक शुकी काज शुरू करने से मुझे मेरा गांव पे हर दीदी लोगों को मैंने पहले खाता खुलवाया और हमारा गवर्नमेंट का जो बीमा योजना गो है पीएमएसबीवाई पीएमजेजीवाई ऑटो पेंशन योजना वो सब भी कराया और अभी तक मैं बैंक से दीदी लोगों को प्रति 3 करोड़ रुपया क्रेडिट लिंकेज भी कराया और मैंने दीदी लोगों को मैंने मुद्रा लोन भी दिलाया किसी लोन भी दिलाया और मेरा एक ग्राहक परिसेवा केंद्र भी है वहां पर जॉब दीदी लोग गांव का दीदी लोग बैंक में जाते हैं डरते हैं तो मेरे पास आते हैं मैं डिजिटल लेनदेन के माध्यम में उसको फॉर्म भरना नहीं पड़ता मैं उसके अकाउंट करवा का खाता खुलवाता हूं उसमें जो इंश्योरेंस का है वो इंश्योरेंस भी करा देता हूं वो बैंक बंद रहने से भी मेरे पास आके पैसा तुलता है जमा करता है सब लेनदेन सुविधा मुझसे पाता है आप तो चलती फिरती बैंक बन गई है <laughs> तो आप एक दिन में सबसे ज्यादा रुपयों का लेनदेन कितना किया होगा अरे लाख किया है अरे लाख तो ढाई लाख में दो लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड दो लाख इक्कीस हजार फिफ्टी थाउजेंड दो लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड किया अच्छा एक दिन में एक दिन में ये लोग थैले में लेके जाती हो पैसे <laughs> नहीं सर मैं वो तो मेरे ग्राहक केंद्र में आ जाते हैं तो आपको डर नहीं लगता कभी नहीं सर पहले तो डरता था मैं तो बहुत छोटा था एक एक रुपया की भी मताज था अभी तो मेरे पास गवर्नमेंट है मेरा सब सुजित सुविधा दे रहा है तो मैं क्यों डरूंगा तो अभी आपकी इनकम कितनी हो गई आय कितनी हो गई आपकी अभी तो सर मैं महीना में पंद्रह हजार रुपया कमा लेता हूँ मेरा किराए पे दुकान से भी भी बारह तेरह हजार रूपया मिल जाता है मेरे सालाना में मुझे ढाई से तीन लाख रूपया रोजगार हो जाता है अच्छा आप और कितने लोगों को मुद्रा लोन दिलवाया उन्होंने रोजगार दिया होगा आपके कारण आपके इलाके में कितने लोगों को रोजगार मिला होगा सर मैंने तो मेरा जो जो समूह दल है जो दीदी मुझसे जब भी मदद चाहता है 
जिसका भी आजीविका ऊपर काज कर रहा है मैं मेरे पास मेरे साथ लेके उसको बैंक मैनेजर के पास ले जाता हूँ उसका खुद का आजीविका दिखाता हूँ तो उसको मुद्रा लोन दिलवाने के मैं हेल्प कर देता हूँ तो गांव वाले आपको कैसे पहचानते हैं सर पहले तो मुझे कोई पहचानता नहीं था अभी तो मैं सब दीदी लोग मुझे बैंक से की और बिजनेस करस्पोंडे से की सी सभी जानते हैं तो मैं बहुत गर्व के साथ कह सकता हूँ जो मेरा गाँव में एक मेरा पहचान है पहले तो मुझे कोई पहचानता नहीं था तो परिवार में भी सम्मान बढ़ गया गांव में भी सम्मान बढ़ गया हाँ सर चलिए बहुत बहुत बधाई आपको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम लेडीज एंड जेंटल Very good morning. It's half past eight. Uh, you are watching the Morning Express. I'm Samiksha Srivastava, tracking all the reactions on the CAA rollout by the central government, starting first uh, with the top headlines at half past eight. Its official centre announces CAA implementation just weeks ahead of polls, uh, sets up portal for registration. Political slugfest over CAA rollout. Opposition questions timing of move. Calls it a political gimmick ahead of grand finale. BJP finalizes Andhra Pradesh uh, pact out of total 25 Lok Sabha seats. TDP to contest on 17 seats. BJP on six and Jan Sena Party on two seats. BJP Central Election Commission me Commission meets for the second time sources uh, say that second list of candidates to be out in the next 48 hours Reports suggest a uh, first batch of Indian military personnel manning operations of a helicopter in Maldives depart from Malian nation move after uh, Maldivian president president's uh, 10th of May ultimatum Ajit Doval calls on Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu amid the raging Gaza war. Both sides discuss efforts to release hostages and issue of humanitarian crisis. And we start first up with the latest on the Lok Sabha elections uh, which is uh, months to go for the Lok Sabha elections 6 years after breaking ties Chandra Babu Naidu TDP has officially returned to the NDA fold and seat sharing between TDP and BJP as well as the Jan Sena has finally been finalized uh, here's a detailed report on what we know so far The stage is set for the big Lok Sabha elections The BJP is on a mission. Six years after breaking ties, Chandra Babu Naidu's TDP has officially returned to the NDA fold. ये आंध्र प्रदेश जनता के लिए और आंध्र प्रदेश के लिए बहुत बड़ी खुशखबरी है कि आज NDA और चंद्र बाबू नायडू साहब की TDP पार्टी का alliance final हो गया और जिस प्रकार चंद्र बाबू नायडू साहब का development का program है ये एनडीए गवर्नमेंट के साथ मिलके हम इसको डबल स्पीड में पूरा कर सकते हैं आंध्र प्रदेश की जनता के हर क्षेत्र में हम जो अधिक से अधिक सुविधाएं अधिक से अधिक उन्नति के अवसर ढूंढेंगे और उनको हर तरीके से सुख सुविधा से पूरा किया जाएगा नायडू हैज ब्रॉट एलाय पवन कल्याण जन सेना पार्टी अलॉन्ग द बीजेपी इज कॉन्फिडेंट ऑफ अचीविंग इट्स फोर प्लस टारगेट एंड इज नाउ गोइंग ऑल आउट track record of prime minister modi's leadership and the government over the last 10 years the manner in which india has developed development is reaching every segment women farmers the youth the marginalized societies the way our economy has gone from the number 10th position to the number 5th 4th on its way to the third largest economy of the world our prestige has globally uh, become much better india is now seen as a bright spot for economic development So in all of this it is but obvious that different political parties would like to join the national mainstream of ensuring that development reaches different parts of the country and they also strengthen the hand of the NDA Days of tug of war between the three overseas sharing is finally over 
Naidu's big move to join the NDA has ruffled some feathers in Andhra Pradesh. An official announcement on seat sharing will make the picture more clear. BJP is all set and has clearly laid out its vision for the decisive 2024 battle. ये जो प्रयास हमने 10 साल किया है जो प्रचंड जन समर्थन देश भर में आज नरेंद्र मोदी जी को भारतीय जनता पार्टी को एनडीए को मिल रहा है मैं देश के कोने-कोने में गया हूं चुनाव के पहले ही मैंने 136 सीटों का विजिट करा है मैं आपको बता सकता हूं कि देश के कोने-कोने से नरेंद्र मोदी जी के समर्थन में जनता खड़ी है and with the Indy only losing significance, by the way, the 400 plus target of the BJP only seems like a matter of time now. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Well, Congress uh, abuse politics uh, has now hit a new low days after Prime Minister Modi announced. The decision to slash LPG cylinder prices by 100 rupees, uh, Karnataka Congress leader G.S. Uh, Manjunath triggered a fresh controversy after he said that he would hit the Prime Minister with his footwear. Now, while uh, the Grand Old Party is yet to criticise their leader, the BJP has hit back sharply. Congress has resorted to abuse politics yet again. Karnataka Congress leader G.S. Manjunath stoked controversy by insulting Prime Minister Narendra Modi for reducing the cost of LPG cylinders by 100 rupees. <laughs> The remarks has opened the floodgates to a political firestorm. BJP condemned Manjunath's comments and responded strongly. प्रधानमंत्री को धमकी देते हैं गाली देते हैं और बोलते हैं मैं पीटूंगा क्योंकि प्रधानमंत्री की गलती यह है कि उन्होंने गरीबों को एक राहत दी सौ रुपए काट कर गैस सिलेंडर पर क्योंकि प्रधानमंत्री गरीबों के लिए काम करते हैं तो बार-बार कांग्रेस पार्टी और खास करके राहुल गांधी और उनके चाहते नेता प्रधानमंत्री मोदी को अपशब्द कहते हैं अपमानित करते हैं गाली देते हैं मारने मरने की धमकी देते हैं we have BJP MLC, Mr. Chalwadi Narayan Swami with us. Let's go across and speak to him. Now we are looking uh, that uh, Congress leader G.S. Manjunath, who is also the Vice President of the Labour Department, has uh, gone ahead and made derogatory remarks against Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He stated uh, after reducing the prices of uh, the LPG by 100 rupees, he's saying that why is this an election gimmick and why this has to be done. He's also stated that whatever he's wearing in his foot, uh, he will uh, hit with that uh, to the Prime Minister. Such below the belt and uh, derogatory statements. How do you look at this? See, derogatory statements and bad-mouthing, it is the property of the Congress party. Not only e these uh, small leaders, their uh, highest leaders, Rahul Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, uh, Sidramaya, everybody use the same uh, language for the uh, Pradhan Mantri and uh, President of India also. Last uh, month, you might have seen, in Kannada, Avalu, Avalu means? In singular manner. In the, it is a singular manner. See, we, we cannot uh, mention all these words to a higher level uh, um, persons. We have to go by respect. But this is, this become a common in uh, Congress party. See, any language, even filthy language also they used to mention these leaders. It is a very, very unfortunate. Okay. Will you will you take legal action against him? Will you go ahead and file a complaint against this person? Yeah, party party will uh, 
uh, decide what has to do. Party and uh, I command also, I will take uh, note of all these things. Congress, on the other hand, has refused to criticize J.S. Manjanath and instead called the BJP arrogant. J.S. Basuraj has said they want to beat it up. 60, more than 65% of the population of this country has voted against BJP. They criticized the policies of Mr. Modi and the BJP. Do you want to beat all of us, 65% of the population, is my question to the BJP MP. The LPG price slash has been widely appreciated, but the Congress seems to be unable to digest the good work being done by the Modi government. Bureau Report, Republic TV. And uh, there have been mass defections uh, from parties in Rajasthan as well. Open defiance in Maharashtra and signs of potential breakup of the Gupka Alliance in Kashmir as well. Uh, the Congress note uh, has been facing the brunt of mass exodus in multiple states. Uh, here's a detailed report. Mass defection in Rajasthan, open defiance in Maharashtra and signs of a potential breakup of the Gupka Alliance in Kashmir. The Congress party is facing the brunt of mass exodus in multiple states. 32 senior leaders in Rajasthan Congress, many who were cabinet ministers in Gehlot's government, jumped ship and joined the BJP on Sunday. I was thinking about what I should do, what I should do, what I should do, what I should और एक नेतृत्व देने का जो रास्ता मुझे लगा वो नरेंद्र मोदी जी का लगा और जिस प्रकार का नेतृत्व उन्होंने देश को दिया है हमने विचार करके उस हमारे जो साथी लोग थे उन्होंने बैठ के बातचीत की और हम सब ने आज भारतीय जनता पार्टी परिवार में शामिल होने का फैसला किया इट इंक्लूडेड वेटरन कांग लीडर्स लालचंद कटारिया रिचपाल मिर्धा एंड खिराली लाल भैरवा हु वर कंसीडर्ड क्लोज एसोसिएट्स ऑफ सचिन पायलट जो हमारा गला घोटने का काम जो कांग्रेस ने किया है उसको देखते हुए हमने भारतीय जनता पार्टी के परिवार में हम शामिल हुए हैं और जो हमारे कार्यकर्ताओं की अंधे की हुई है उसको देखते हुए हमने भारतीय जनता पार्टी का दामन थामा है कट टू महाराष्ट्र वेयर अ मैसिव फेस ऑफ इज गोइंग ऑन बिटवीन उद्धव शिवसेना एंड कांग्रेस ओवर सीट शेयरिंग एक मिनट वहां कार्यकर्ता की वैल्यू खत्म वहां कुछ चुनिंदा लोग हैं जिन लोगों ने अपनी बपोती समझ रखी है पचहत्तर साल वर्ष का आदमी अपने आप को ये कहता है कि मुझे युवाओं को हमको आगे ला रहे हैं अरे भाई तू कौन सा युवा है? है जो अपना बाप का बेटे का नहीं होगा किसका होगा चल अप नॉर्थ द गुपकार अलायंस ऑल्सो सीम्स टू बी ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ कलेप्सिंग विद टसल गोइंग ऑन बिटवीन द जे के एन सी एंड द पी डी पी कि जब कई पार्टियां मिलकर के एक गठबंधन बनाती हैं तो थोड़ा खींचतान रहता है सभी पार्टियों के अपने अपने दावे रहते हैं और राजनीतिक जो वो है जो एक फार्मूला है या फिर राजनीतिक सूझबूझ यही है उन विवादों को जल्दी से जल्दी दूर किया जाए तो वो थोड़ा सा टाइम लग रहा है और उसके तहत जो महाराष्ट्र के अड़तालीस सीटों पर जो एक चर्चा चल रही है उसमें थर्टी या उनतालीस सीटों के ऊपर फैसला हो चुका है नौ सीटें पेंडिंग हैं सम आर ट्राइंग टू कीप द फ्लॉक टूगेदर Sir, PDP had already committed in the Bombay meeting, the Mumbai meeting of the India Alliance. I was there when Madam Mehbooba Mufti categorically said that whatever decision Dr. Farooq Abdullah takes with regard to seat distribution for Parliament in Jammu and Kashmir is acceptable to the PDP. We are all, we were all there. She categorically said that any decision Dr. Farooq Abdullah takes is acceptable. The India Alliance is breaking apart as it seems and the Congress High Command will have to put together a miracle to keep the bloc intact until the Lok Sabha polls. Bureau Report, Republic TV. And uh, we are heading into a very short break coming up uh, on the Morning Express. Uh, BJP finalizes uh, Andhra Pact out of total 25 Lok Sabha seats in the state, PDP to contest 17, BJP 6, and the Jan Sena on two seats.
Also, BJP Central Election Committee meets for the second time. Sources uh, say that second list of candidates candidates to be out in the next 48 hours. goes to Emma Stone. Someone once told me, wars don't start with explosions, they start with silence. Now it's time for the nation's sharpest opinion. Big story today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the first successful flight test of the Agni-5 missile. Ladies and gentlemen, this beauty is Bharat's most lethal missile. It's an ICBM. The Agni-5 is equipped with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle technology or the very high-end, very sophisticated MIRV technology. And let me explain to you what that means. This is our most lethal weapon because it is capable of carrying money. Now, news uh, from France, uh, French Prime Minister gathered uh, on a schoolyard to pay tribute to those who have lost their lives to radical terrorism. 
Note that the ceremony comes after France uh, witnessed brutal killings of two school teachers in less than three years by students who were systematically radicalized. The Prime Minister stressed on the importance of education in combating uh, extremist terrorism and called for a united front to defend the French Republic. In France, Prime Minister Gabriel Attal presided over a solemn ceremony dedicated to commemorating the victims of terrorism. In his address, Attal stressed on the pivotal role of education in combating extremism. Urging unity and resilience, the French Prime Minister called upon citizens to defend the Republic and its cherished values against the indoctrination of youth. De tous les obscurantismes, de l'obscurantisme islamiste qui veut mettre à bas notre école pour ses valeurs, nous lutterons et nous vaincrons. Ici, à Arras, comme quelques années plus tôt à conflans saint honorine contre Samuel Paty, c'est à l'école que le terrorisme s'en est pris. Ce choix n'a rien d'un hasard. L'école, c'est ce qui élève, c'est ce qui donne les clés de la connaissance et du savoir. C'est là que le respect s'inculque et que la liberté se comprend. He strongly asserted that France will not bow to the threats of terrorism and that the government will always attempt to shield the republic. Les terroristes nous attaquent, nous atteignent, nous touchent, mais ils ne nous feront jamais céder. Ils ne nous feront jamais céder. Nous ne leur céderons rien. Nous ne céderons rien à leur fanatisme, quel qu'il soit, car nous savons que l'unité le terrassera. Nous ne céderons rien face à leurs injonctions, car nous nous battrons toujours pour que le progrès l'emporte. Nous ne céderons rien face à leurs menaces, car rien ne nous arrêtera pour défendre la République et pour protéger les Français. Nous ne céderons rien. France remains on high alert since the tragic stabbing of Dominique Bernard by a former student believed to be radicalized. This incident occurred nearly three years after the brutal beheading of another teacher, Samuel Patti, by a radicalized Chechen near a school in the Paris area. As the nation grapples with the persistent threat of terrorism, Prime Minister Attil's resolute message serves as a rallying call for solidarity and vigilance. Agency Report, Republic TV. Now, when uh, Russians head to ballot boxes this weekend for the country's presidential election to take place, they do so knowing that one man is all but certain to win. Russian President Vladimir Putin has wrested tight control over Russia's political system during his 24 years in power. If successful, he will once again win another six-year term, cementing his place in power until 2030. This week's election in Russia is expected to cement President Vladimir Putin's grip on power until at least 2030. Any opposition figures who could have challenged him are either in prison or exiled abroad. Independent media outlets that could show criticism of his policies have been blocked. And the Kremlin maintains rigid control over the political system and electoral process in a country of 146 million people. Спасибо всем, кто сказал да великой России. Я вас спросил однажды, мы победим? However, the Russian election will be closely watched by those looking for insight into the major nuclear power as it continues its two-year-old full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Был такой обычный стандартный авторитаризм. Теперь это 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 уже больше, чем просто авторитаризм. Это авторитарное общество, которое движется в направлении тоталитаризма. Это еще не то, чтобы мы туда уже приехали, да? Нет. Нельзя сказать, что Россия на сегодня это тоталитарное государство. Но отдельные элементы тоталитарных практик активно внедряются государством. И они уже ну, здесь, они, так сказать, работают. 
Putin still commands wide support after nearly a quarter century in power. Despite starting a special military operation in Ukraine that has taken thousands of his countrymen's lives, provoked repeated attacks inside Russia, including one on the Kremlin itself, and corroded its aura of invincibility. Whether due to real or coerced support, Putin faces only one token of opposition on the ballot for the March 2024 election. Agency Report, Republic TV. And with that, it's a wrap on uh, the Morning Express. Uh, a lot of news breaks lined up on the other side, live and breaking, uh, tracking the latest on fireworks over CAA rollout by the central government. Also, the latest on the CEC meet that was held by the BJP last night. Its official centre announces CEA implementation just weeks ahead of polls, sets up portal for registration. And political slugfest over CA rollout, opposition questions, timing of move calls it a political gimmick ahead of grand finale. Now we are in Russia. We are in Nepal. But we are in Nepal. 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 एजेंट ने हमें झूठ बोल के इधर भेजा है फायर में जा रहे हैं वार में जा रहे हैं इसलिए हम लोग यहाँ से निकलना चाहते हैं इसलिए हम अपना वो पड़ोसी देश इंडिया से मदद मांगना चाहते हैं हमें बहुत बड़ा आस है कि इंडिया भी हमारा मदद करेगा हमें निराश नहीं करेगा अभी हम लोग रशिया के आर्मी में हैं हम लोग हमारा मुल्क नेपाल से आए थे लेकिन अभी यहाँ आके हमें बहुत ज़्यादा प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है क्योंकि हमारे साथ एजेंट ने हमें झूठ बोल के इधर भेजा है हमें रशिया आर्मी में जाके हेल्पर में काम करना चाहिए ऐसा बोल के हमें भेजा था लेकिन इधर आके हमें फाइट में जा, जाना पड़ रहा है फाइट में जा रहे हैं वार में जा रहे हैं इसलिए हम लोग यहाँ से निकलना चाहते हैं हमारे साथ तीन इंडिया के भाई लोग थे उन उन लोगों को इंडिया ने वापस कर दिया लेकिन हमारा नेपाल एम्बेसी हमारे कुछ भी हेल्प नहीं कर रहा है कुछ भी नहीं हो रहा है नेपाल से इसलिए हम अपना वो पड़ोसी देश इंडिया से मदद मांगना चाहते हैं हमें बहुत बड़ा आस है कि इंडिया भी हमारा मदद करेगा हमें निराश नहीं करेगा क्योंकि नेपाल और इंडिया का बहुत अच्छा संबंध संबोधन संबंध संबंध है इसलिए हम आप लोगों से मदद मांगना चाहते हैं क्योंकि आप लोगों का देश बहुत एम भी पावरफुल है देश भी पावरफुल है हमारा नेपाल से कुछ भी नहीं हो रहा है अभी हम लोग सभी लोग यहाँ के नेपाल के सभी लोग भाई लोग नेपाल जाना चाहते हैं क्योंकि हमारे साथ फ्रॉड हुआ है हमें हेल्पर में बोल के अभी हमें फाइट में भेज रहे हैं बहुत ज़्यादा हमारे हम तीस बंदे थे हमारे तीस बंदे में अभी हम सिर्फ पांच पांच बंदे बाकी हैं किसी को किधर भेजा है कि कोई लोग ज़्यादा इंजरी हुआ है लेकिन हम लोग अभी सिर्फ पाँच ही है वही है हम आप लोग से मदद मांगना चाहते हैं अगर हो सकता है तो हमें भी निकालो यहाँ से हम इंडिया से मदद मांगना चाहते हैं नमस्ते थैंक यू थैंक यू नाउ इट्स टाइम फॉर द नेशन शार्पेस्ट ओपिनियन बिग स्टोरी टुडे 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the first successful flight test of the Agni-5 missile. Ladies and gentlemen, this beauty is Bharat's most lethal missile. It's an ICBM. The Agni-5 is equipped with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle technology or the very high-end, very sophisticated MIRV technology. And let me explain to you what that means. This is our most lethal weapon because it is capable of carrying multiple warheads. And each of the warheads have the ability to launch targeted precision strikes on separate locations on any country's soil. Welcome, you're watching Live and Breaking with me, Gini Narula. Now let's take a look at our top headlines that we are tracking at this hour. It's official. Centre announces CA implementation just weeks ahead of polls, sets up portal for registration. <coughs> Political slugfest over CA rollout. Opposition questions timing of move calls it a poll gimmick ahead of grand finale. BJP finalizes Andhra Pact out of a total of 25 Lok Sabha seats. TDP will contest 17 seats, BJP 6 and Jansena Party 2. BJP's Central Election Committee meets for the second time. Sources say the second list of candidates to be out in 48 hours. Reports say first batch of Indian military personnel manning operations of a helicopter in Maldives depart from island nation. Move comes after President Muitsu's May 10 ultimatum. NSA Ajit Joval calls on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu amid Gaza war. Both sides discuss efforts to release hostages and issue humanitarian crisis. Now, the Citizenship Act has become a reality now. The Modi government has made the historic announcement just weeks ahead of the Lok Sabha polls. It has delivered uh, one of its biggest poll promise four years after the bill was passed. The opposition, on the other hand, has questioned the timing of the announcement and has called for a protest once again. But why is the opposition spreading a false narrative despite government's assurance? Why is the opposition having a meltdown? Here's a report. Four years after the bill was passed, the game-changer citizenship law is now a reality. The Modi government made the historic announcement just weeks before the Lok Sabha elections. It delivered one of its biggest poll promise. CAA is a ये लागू होगा ही होगा और इस चुनाव के पहले हो इस चुनाव के पहले होगा ये बहुत बड़ी बात कही आज गृह मंत्री जी ने बहुत बड़ी बात हम सब के सामने जी तालियां बज गई कोई धमाका नहीं है ये बात मैं 10 बार बता चुका हूं नहीं मगर आप चुनाव के पहले सीए लागू होगा इस देश का कानून है इसको कोई नहीं रोक सकता सेलिब्रेशंस ब्रोक आउट इन सेवरल पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री even as protests erupt against CAA in Assam, security stepped up in Shaheen Bagh. The Union Home Ministry has cleared the air once again amid fears of deportation of Muslim immigration. The centre has stated clearly 
that both the CAA and NRC have nothing to do with deportation. It goes on to say that CAA will not affect any Indian citizen, including Muslims. The opposition has questioned center's move, alleging it's a bid to polarize polls. Rules notification में अगर हम देखेंगे कि ये deprive कर रहा है लोगों का अधिकार को, हम जब rules निकालेंगे, हम उसको study करके जो बताना है काल बताएंगे। लेकिन मैं आज बोल दिया कि ये BJP का election publicity है, nothing is there. Amisha is known for making such provocative statements. Amisha is known for provoking people and pitting against one section against another. That is what he wants at the time of elections. There should be communal tensions, conflicts in the country. It is discriminatory. And of course, uh, on the basis of religion, citizen amendment back, act is going to be implemented. With the biggest reform now a reality, why is opposition having a meltdown? See, already the uh, act is uh, opposed by all political parties, both in uh, within the parliament and uh, outside the parliament. Uh, tremendous op opposition was shown by all opposition political parties and various organizations throughout the country because it is total discriminatory act and uh, no, unconstitutional act because citizenship is uh, government is trying to give citizenship on the basis of uh, religion which is not permissible un under provisions of indian constitution ye party ka strength pravakta denge lekin meri niji rai hai ki ye galat hai aur galat samay pe laya gaya hai galat samay pe aise laya gaya hai ki chunav ke samay pe isko lagu karna jab already ek kanun bana hua tha ca ka citizenship act tha hamare paas और उसमें कहीं कोई लाचारी नहीं थी तो क्या जरूरत पड़ी थी और फिर एक समाज को उससे दूर रखना ये इंटेंशन देता है कि नफरत को बढ़ावा देना है और चुनाव का फायदा लेना है अच्छा तो आप आप अपनी व्यक्तिगत राय जो बता रहे हैं तो आपका कोई कदम होगा इसको लेकर नोटिफिकेशन लागू हो गया तो नहीं बिल्कुल हम लोग इस पर अभी अभी क्योंकि अभी तुरंत नोटिफिकेशन हुआ इसको पूरा करेंगे और उसके बाद जरूर इसका विरोध करेंगे अच्छा और मुस्लिम पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड की हैसियत से आप चूंकि उसके मेंबर रहे हैं तो उस बोर्ड की हैसियत से क्या कहेंगे देखिए मुस्लिम पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड अभी अपना अधिकृत इस पर क्योंकि वो लोग बहुत जल्दी रिएक्ट करते नहीं है बोर्ड की एग्जीक्यूटिव कमेटी की मीटिंग होगी और उसी पर इसमें डिस्कशन जरूर आएगा क्योंकि वैसे ये मुस्लिम पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड के दायरे में आता नहीं है पर्सनल लॉ बोर्ड शरीय पर बोलता है उससे बोलता नहीं है लेकिन क्योंकि सी थोड़ा गंभीर इशू है इस पर शायद बात की जाए भारत सरकार ने सीए कानून लागू कर दिया है उसकी नोटिफिकेशन जारी कर दी है मैं इस कानून के लागू किए जाने पर इसका इस्तेमाल करता हूं स्वागत करता हूं और ये लागू बहुत पहले किया जाना चाहिए था खैर देर आयत दुरुस्त आयत इस कानून से भारत में करोड़ों मुसलमानों का से मुतल कोई लेना देना नहीं है और ना ही इस कानून के जरिए किसी भी मुसलमान शख्स की नागरिकता जाएगी या शहरी छीनी जाएगी इसलिए मैं मुसलमानों के दरमियान जो गलत फहमी पैदा हुई और गुजशत सालों में देखा गया कि जगह जगह एहतजाजी मुजाहरे हुए धरने हुए तो ये गलत फहमियों की बुनियाद पर थे कुछ लोगों ने पोलिटिकल लोगों ने मुसलमानों के दरमियान गलत फहमियां पैदा कर दी गई थी मगर अब बहुत हद तक तमाम चीजें दूर हो चुकी हैं और मैं ये चाहूंगा कि हिंदुस्तान का हर मुसलमान इस कानून का इस्तेमाल करे इट इज वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट दट आफ्टर ए वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम ऑफ मोर देन थ्री एंड ऑफ इयर्स दे हैव नोटिफाइड एंड दे वुड हैव टेकन ए डिसीजन अर्ली इट सेल्फ हू सेट नो नाउ एट द टाइम ऑफ इलेक्शन वेयर देर बी लॉट ऑफ Uh, communal issues may start we don't want anything to start people will we want a peaceful country we want all section of the society to be together so this is not the right time they could have taken earlier whatever the stand they called because they are the absolute majority the timing of taking a decision is completely wrong number 1 number 2 that was not needed for this country according to me पोस्ट पार्टीशन प्री पार्टीशन एंड पोस्ट पार्टीशन 
it was more of an akanda bharata hindus and all the non muslim people were living in akanda bharata so since the partition has happened it was a long pending issue many of our non muslim people living in all the different uh, countries like bangladesh pakistan afghanistan or persecuted and it uh, life had become in a hell or a difficult for them to live in those countries so people have migrated to india other non muslim pe migrants will be granted uh, citizenship it's a much needed this what uh, for this we have been looking forward for many decades uh, this is going to become a reality we are extremely happy and we whole heartedly we compliment congratulate the honorable prime minister and the government of india and the honorable home minister for coming forward to notify this uh, act i think this is the best thing what we can do for the non for the migrants who have been living for a long time without any citizenship right uh, my colleague uh, simran is joining us uh, from new delhi from majnu katila very good morning to you simran finally of course we know that ca has been rolled out now the opposition is questioning the timing they are saying why before the lok sabha elections and of course uh, one of the leaders is also blaming amit shah for inciting uh, he's popularly known for inciting communal violence now why is the opposition reacting the way it is Well, yes, as you can see behind me, the atmosphere is of celebration, happiness, and pure joy. This is the scenes right now at the colonies of the Pakistani refugees, the Hindu families who have come from the Pakistan or from Bangladesh or from neighboring nations who were promised, remember, in 2019, to be granted the citizenship. And right now, when we are at the locality, the entire the atmosphere is just of joy i'll just go to one of the residents who have come from there and let you know about the voices from the ground who are feeling after being granted the citizenship ab aapko nagrikta milne wali hai aapke hi apne desh mein kuch saal pehle jab aap aaye the 19 mein iska elan hua tha ab kaisa lag raha hai aapko aur kis tarike ka aapki bhavna aa rahi hai भावना तो बहुत बहुत अच्छी आ रही है और सोच भी नहीं सकते थे पहले हमें नागरिकता मिल जाएगी और जब हम जाते थे कहीं पे भी जाते थे पाकिस्तानी करके बुलाते थे जब पाकिस्तान में रहते तो हिंदू करके बुलाते थे अब हमें दोनों तरफ से घिसर जाते थे अब हम तो एक तरफ हो जाएंगे हिंदुस्तानी बन जाएंगे इसी बात की हमें बहुत खुशी हो रही है और अमित शाह को हमें बहुत बहुत प्रणाम करते हैं उनके चरणों में हम नमस्कार करते हैं मोदी और जोगी को और जैसे राम जन्म भूमि बनाई बहुत पहले तो राम जन्म भूमि पहले राम जन्म भूमि से ही हमें पहले नागरिकता मिलनी चाहिए था मगर मोदी ने सोचा पहले राम का घर बना दूं, फिर शरारति का बना दूंगा तो इसलिए हम बोलते हैं राम जन्म ही आ गया इसके चौदह साल बनवास काट के तो अभी हमारा बनवास पूरा हो रहा है इसलिए हम और जोगी को और मोदी को और अमित शाह को हम धन्यवाद कहते हैं और ये देश भर पूरा देश का पूरा दिल्ली का पूरा हिंदू धर्म का ये बादशाह है राजा है हमारा उनको कोटि कोटि परिणाम है जी जरूर जिस तरीके से अभी नागरिकता का ऐलान हुआ है बच्चे भी आपके हैं तकरीबन दिल्ली के अंदर 600 फैमिली हैं यहाँ 200 सौ हैं बच्चे छोटे छोटे हैं अब नागरिकता मिलने से आपको क्या लगता है उनके भविष्य को लेकर भी एक सकारात्मक तरीका है जिसे आगे देखा जाएगा स्कूलों के अंदर दस्तावेज होते हैं तो इन सब तरीकों से क्या लगता है देख वो तो बच्चे हमारे छोटे हैं अब जब तक खिसे में जो दौर पे रहेगा अब कोई गरीब है कोई अमीर है कोई कैसा है कोई किसान है कोई दौर पे कमा के लाने वाले हैं अभी सरकारी स्कूल में प्राइवेट में तो हम नहीं पढ़ा रहे हैं सरकारी में पढ़ा रहे हैं जब तक सरकार पढ़ाएंगे उनको नौकरी देंगे तो हमें बहुत खुशी होगी उनकी भविष्य और बदल जाएंगे हमारे से ही वो आगे बढ़ पाए और हम अनपढ़ लें पढ़े लिखे नहीं हैं और हमारे बच्चे पढ़ाने के लिए हिंदू धर्म के लिए लाए और मेरे चार बच्चे हैं वो दो बच्चे गुरुकुल में हैं दो बच्चे गुरुकुल में हैं मैंने तो ये सोच के डाला है कि हमारे बच्चे पढ़ जाएं अब यहाँ के देखते हैं कहाँ तक बात होती है वो तो मोदी और जो हमारी ज़िंदगी हमारी ज़िंदगी उनके हाथ में ज़िंदगी की डोर वो यहाँ के हिंदू के हाथ में है 
कहा मैं तो कहा तक ले जाएंगे जिस तरीके से मैं देख रही हूँ ये आपके हाथ में एक मैगजीन है जिसमें 2019 में अमित शाह ने ऐलान किया था वालिका तो आप लोगों ने संभाल के रखी है हमने संभाल के रखी इंतजार कर रहे थे कि ये जो नागरिकता का कागज आया था अभी भी हमें पक्की नागरिकता मिल जाएगी हमें इस बात की बहुत बहुत खुशी है हम चाहते हैं कि हम दुनिया जैसे जैसे हिंदुस्तानी हैं हम उसी तरह से रहना चाहते हैं हमारे पे भगवान की दया हो गई जैसे राम मंदिर बन गया ऐसे हमारा घर भी बन जाएगा अमित शाह करेगा दिल्ली सरकार करेगी मोदी करेगा तो क्या नहीं हो सकता है किसान हम किसान इतने परिवार हैं कि हम जितने भी हैं सब हम खेती बाड़ी का काम करते हैं ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा यहाँ भूखे मर गए शहर का काम हमें कोई आता नहीं है रेडी बगैर और ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा औरतें मर्द हम साथ ही मिलकर खेती का काम करते हैं हाँ सब बनने बारा का काम कर जिस तरीके से देखा जा रहा है कि अब घरों को मिलने की एक बहुत उम्मीद जगी है आप लोग जहाँ यहाँ रह रहे थे वहाँ घर नहीं पक्के बच्चों का स्कूलों में एडमिशन नहीं है इन सब मामलों में अब आपको किस तरीके से लगता है जो घर परिवार है जो अपने देश में ही आए थे कितने साल पहले उनके लिए आगे के कुछ साल कैसे दिखते हैं उसे आगे आगे तो बस डर डर के जी रहे थे कोई भी कुछ कहने को किसे कहें अपना दुख दर्द किसे कहें मगर ये जो सी ए सी ए पास हुआ है इससे ये लग रहा है कि हमें अपना जीवन मिला है न्यू नया जीवन मिला है और इसी प्रकार ये परिवारों ने जो अमित शाह ने पाकिस्तान अब बांग्लादेश अफगानिस्तान से जो हिंदू की पीड़ा की आवाज़ जो सुनी है वो मोदी सरकार ने सुनी है और अमित शाह जी ने सुनी है इन्हों के विचारों से इन पीड़ित परिवारों की आवाज़ सुनी है उसी से इनको नागरिकता मिली है और हमें ये विश्वास नहीं हो रहा था कि हमें यहाँ भारत में अपनाएंगे आज हमें पता चला है हाँ आज हमें पता चला है कि ये हमारे हैं हमारे हैं जैसे अमित शाह कहते हैं ये हिंदू शनार्थी परिवार हमारे भाई हैं इसी प्रकार हम भी एक मोदी भारत सरकार का परिवार बन चुके हैं और इस खुशी में हम बहुत खुश हैं जो ये हमारे लिए इतना बड़ा रकम उठाया और हमें आज़ादी दी एक समझो किसी जेल खाने से हमें आज़ादी दिलवा दी That's how the atmosphere right now is ringing in. As you can see behind me, there are the residents of this colony that are dancing on the chants of Hare Ram, Hare Ram. And not just that, what you can see also is a mandir that has been built by the residents of this colony in Majru Ka Tila who have come uh, in 2011 or in 2013. after being migrating from pakistan and at this moment this is the atmosphere whether it's women whether it's children or whether it's the men of the society the people are rejoicing with happiness after being uh, assured that citizenship will be granted to them what we can see right now is also lot of chants and sloganeering is happening at this moment when we reach here let me tell you that in the morning prayers were uh, offered uh, offered here in this mandir this mandir as we are given to told by the people present at the ground that was built in 2011 when these people came by collecting the funds and donations in this area as there has been a complete environment of joy and happiness unfolding from this very location it remains to be seen how other localities that have been settling in the national capital particularly demanding about the citizenship amendment bill, bill will be acting also and celebrating in the days to come ahead of the lok sabha assembly elections back to you Right, Simran. Um, uh, thank you so much for those reactions. Of course, uh, my colleague Simran getting reactions from the grassroots level. How people are celebrating, and of course, uh, they are happy about the fact that <clears throat> it will give them property purchase rights and remove our uh, legal barriers to rehabilitation and citizenship and give them a dignified life uh, to the refugees who have suffered for decades. Now, another news uh, related to the CAA. This time, coming in from. Guwahati the Guwahati police has given a legal notice to a political parties who have called for a 
Sarbatmak Hartal in Assam to protest against the CA. The police has issued a notice which says that any damage to public or private property including railway and national highway properties or injury to any citizen caused due to Sarbatmak Hartal Legal action, appropriate provisions of law including Indian Penal Code and Prevention of Damage to Public Property Act 1984 will be initiated against the perpetrators and the total cost of damage to public and private properties will be recovered from them and their organization. <coughs> The Guwahati police has of course cautioned against damages uh, during protests, stating that legal, strict legal action will be taken against the violators. Assam of course has a history with the CA marked by violent protests in 2019 resulting in casualties. Uh, if you remember viewers, indigenous groups fear that uh, CA will encourage an influx of immigrants, changing the demographic fabric of the region. Right, uh, it's time to slip into a very short break, uh, but coming up after the break, uh, BJP finalizes Andhra Pact, TDP will contest in 17 seats, BJP 6, Janasena Party 2. BJP Central Election Committee meets for the second time. This and much more after a very short break. Stay tuned, viewers. Amity faculty have filed over 2100 patents. Yet another reason why Amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements. ثبتنا خمسة مبادئ من أجل تحقيق هذا الاتفاق الذي نسعى إليه هذه المبادئ متمثلة في وقف إطلاق النار الشامل وإنهاء الحرب على غزة الانسحاب الكامل لجيش الاحتلال من كل أراضي القطاع عودة النازحين بشكل كامل وبدون شروط إلى أماكن سكناهم وكل القضايا أيضا الإنسانية من قبيل الإغاثة والمساعدات والإيواء والإعمار وإنهاء الحصار وكل ما يتعلق بهذا البعد الإنساني لأهلنا في القطاع ثم المبدأ الخامس هو الوصول إلى صفقة مشرفة بموجبها يتم تبادل الأسرى أقول اليوم إذا تسلمنا من الإخوة الوسطاء موقفا واضحا من الاحتلال بالتزامه بالانسحاب ووقف العدوان وعودة النازحين جاهزين إلى أن نصل إلى استكمال حلقات هذا الاتفاق 
وأن نبدي أيضا كما قلنا مرونة فيما يتعلق بموضوع التبادل والأسرة العدو حتى الآن يتهرب من إعطاء ضمانات والتزامات واضحة خاصة في موضوع وقف إطلاق النار أي وقف الحرب العدوانية على قطاع غزة حتى قبل ساعات من هذه الكلمة كنت على اتصال مع إخواني الوسطاء لم نتلقى إطلاقا أي التزام بهذا المعنى بمعنى أنه يريد أسرى ويريد استرداد أسرى ويستأنف الحرب على شعبنا وعلى قطاعنا وهنا أنا أريد أن أشير إلى موقفنا الواضح الذي يرتكز على الشراكة Welcome back, viewers. Uh, now, NIA is carrying out extensive searches at 30 locations across four states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Union Territory of Chandigarh in terrorist gangster nexus case. Now, viewers, raids are being conducted in Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Chandigarh. The National Investigation Agency is conducting searches at 30 locations. This is in connection with the terrorist gangster Nexus case. The NIA is of course uh, probing the activities of various uh, terrorist organizations and criminal gangs based in India and abroad. My colleague uh, Gur Simran is joining us uh, to give us more details on this. Uh, Gur Simran, a very good morning to you, of course. Uh, we understand that NIA is carrying out uh, raids in 30 locations uh, across uh, four states, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh and Chandigarh, of course. Now, this is in connection with uh, the terrorist gangster Nexus case. Uh, what other details have you gathered? Have they recovered anything incriminating against uh, these uh, people uh, where they are conducting the raids? See, since today morning, the National Investigation Agency is carrying out raids and this is in connection with FIR number 20 and 30 that was registered in 2022 by the Delhi Police Station of the National Investigation Agency that pertains to the larger nexus. This was a Suomoto case that was taken cognizance by the National Investigation Agency that how this terror uh, gangster network is working, especially in Rajasthan, Punjab, Madhya Pradesh, how uh, the weapons are being supplied uh, from Madhya Pradesh to Punjab to Rajasthan to Haryana and also in the Union Territory of Chandigarh, the raids are being conducted. Important to mention that this come into force after the killing of uh, Kabaddi player Sandeep uh, Nangalambia and also uh, there have been multiple instances wherein from inside the Goindwal Sahib jail, the central jail in Punjab, how this uh, entire module of terror being run by the Pakistani handlers and also many those who were sitting in Australia, Canada and other countries, those who have fled from the India are uh, having the red corner notices issued against them but they are operating freely from the foreign land to carry out turmoil within the country and uh, there were multiple incidents when they used their Pakistani handlers to push weapons and narcotics into the Indian territory using drones. Uh, taking the Suo Motor Cognizance National Investigation Agency has uh, charge sheeted more than 25 people in this case uh, uh, at least 3 to 4 supplementary charge sheets have already been filed by the investigating agency and thorough links of uh, the gangsters with the terror groups have emerged during the investigation so far and Today, the raids are being conducted at four states and one union territory, that is UT of Chandigarh. Uh, right, Gus uh, thanks very much for that update, of course. Uh, we will keep coming back to you as and when the raids progress. Now, it's time to slip into a very short break, uh, but coming up after the break... It's official. Center announces CA implementation just week ahead of polls. Sets up portal for registration. Good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. 
Amit Shah said it to me on the 7th of March. And tonight, the breaking news is that the Citizenship Amendment Act, the CAA, has been notified. I welcome it wholeheartedly. And in this time, I want to begin by saying that we must not give in. We must not give in this time to the Shaheen Bagh type polarizing threats. And we must not allow, we must not allow anyone to spread the falsehood that a few persecuted Hindus, a few terrorized Buddhists, a few persecuted Sikhs, and a few persecuted Christians from Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, where they are persecuted, where they are terrorized, that their coming to India will put Indian secularism at risk. I say on the contrary tonight that it will not. India is not for Rohingyas. This channel will say it as clearly as that. India is not for the Bangladeshi illegal infiltrators who have entered in millions over the decades. And in Indian states, especially the state of Assam, where I am from, especially the state of Bengal, robbed Indians of their own soil, their own security and their own ethnic identity. India is not for them. Then you'll ask me if it is not for them, why should it be for a few persecuted Hindus? If Muslims are not allowed to come to India from Pakistan and from Bangladesh and from Afghanistan, why should Hindus be allowed? If Muslims are not allowed to come from Bangladesh, why should Buddhists be allowed? Why should Christians be allowed? Are not all religions not equal? Well, I believe all religions are equal. But can any of the people spreading that rubbish look at me eye to eye and say Muslims are per persecuted? in Bangladesh for their religion? Are Muslims persecuted in Afghanistan for their religion? Does the Taliban target Muslims for being Muslim? It's official. Center announces CA implementation just weeks ahead of polls, sets a portal for all registration. Political slugfest over CA rollout opposition questions. Timing of the move calls it a poll gimmick ahead of grand finale. BJP finalizes Andhra Pact out of a total of 25 Lok Sabha seats. TDP will contest 17 seats, BJP 6 and Jan Sena Party 2. BJP Central Election Committee meets for the second time. Sources say the second list of candidates to be out in 48 hours. Reports say first batch of Indian military personnel manning operations of a helicopter in Maldives depart from island nation. Move comes after President Moizu's May 10 ultimatum. NSA Ajit Jawal calls on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu amid Gaza war. Both sides discuss efforts to release hostages and issue uh, of humanitarian crisis. Now, just days ahead of the announcement of general elections, the Ministry of Home Affairs notified the Citizenship Amendment Rules 2024 that would enable the implementation of the Citizenship Amendment Act passed by the Parliament in 2019. Right. Uh, of course, uh, it is going to give property pur purchase rights to the citizens and uh, remove legal barriers to rehabilitation and citizenship and give uh, uh, the refugees a dignified life who, has suffer who have suffered for decades. Uh, my colleague, uh, Gur Simran, is joining us. 
Uh, Gur Simran, <clears throat> once again, back to you, of course. Um, we were just speaking to Simran a while back, and she was getting us reactions from the grassroots level, you know, the refugees who are so happy that the CAA has been rolled out. But of course, the opposition is uh, hitting back, calling it a poll gimmick, and they are saying the timing, you know, they're questioning the timing. This has to come right before the Lok Sabha elections. Gur Simran. Yes, the political parties, the opposition parties in Jammu and Kashmir do have questioned the timing of uh, the uh, notification of the Citizenship Amendment Act. Join my, me is Provincial Secretary of the National Conference, Sheikh Bashir. Uh, Mr. Bashir, how do you see uh, this move of the government? Because the government made it amply clear earlier also that the CA notification will come and it will come prior to the elections. Prior to the election? Uh, this CA Kanun, uh, this law was passed uh, in 2019 and it has been notified after five years. So I hope they are uh, interested in polarization. BJP is known for polarization. So what do you expect from them? I hope uh, everybody is knowing that uh, population uh, is an issue at present and they want to adjust Afghan people, Pakistani people and other people here. So let the people decide that how they de behave with this bill. When you say that the BJP is up to polarization, the BJP says that it is not about taking someone's uh, citizenship, it is about granting citizenship to those who are suffering in the countries, be it the Pakistan, Afghanistan or Bangladesh. Why? There are other issues, so to sideline those issues, they are um, now uh, saying that we will uh, uh, implement this. The who stopped them? Four years they have uh, left because everybody wants that how they will uh, um, uh, utilize this bill. So they want polarization. They have uh, lost other issues. They have no answer for the issues for unemployment and uh, uh, the big issue is price rise and they have failed and now the issue was that electoral bond in which yesterday court has snubbed the uh, liar so these issues they want to sideline these issues and uh, go for uh, the CA. So sir, uh, uh, you are saying that they have done this just for the political gains and also to polarize. Definitely the, political gains. But the government is saying that nothing is going to happen. This is just a part of the law that we passed in 2019 and just notification has come forth. Who was demanding this bill? Who demanded this bill when it was passed? BJP's agenda, agenda is to polarize the society and to go, go far. So, again, uh, the political parties of the German Kashmir, including the National Conference, they are saying that uh, this is being done at this time, days ahead of the announcement of the elections, the Lok Sabha elections, just to polarize people so that BJP can fetch some votes. Uh, back to you, Guinea. Back to you, Right, uh, Gur Simran, thanks for that update. Of course, we can see celebration as well as protests uh, in some parts of the country. Now, moving on to other news, uh, the Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar, along with a team of Election Commission of India officials, uh, are, three day, uh, are on a three-day visit to Jammu and Kashmir to review preparations for Lok Sabha polls. Zenath gets us this report. The wait is over as the ECI team is in the Kashmir Valley and this is going to be the three-day visit of ECI team to Jammu and Kashmir. Today they have reached here at the Hotel Lilith and where they will be staying here and then tomorrow the goal post will be at SKICC where they will be meeting the political leaders, the stakeholders to know about the situation in Jammu and Kashmir because the political parties have been demanding long for the long time that the Lok Sabha polls and the Assembly's polls should be held together. There have been the 
questions that have been raised by the political parties that if government can hold parliament polls why not the assembly polls why there is a delay recently there has been also directions from the supreme court to the government that to hold the assembly elections jammu and kashmir is not it did not have the elections since 2018 and since then we have been seeing the president's rule although we are seeing that tomorrow there will be they will be meeting the political leaders they will also be meeting the stakeholders and meanwhile a eci team is to review the preparations for the upcoming parliamentary polls it with vijay mubashir husain i'm zinad zishan fazil for republic in shrinagar Now news and wrap uh, from across the country the awaited second list of candidates for the BJP is anticipated to be officially released today following the second and ostensibly conclusive meeting of the Central Election Committee held till uh, late Monday in the presence of Prime Minister and other senior leaders Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar accompanied by a team of approximately a dozen officials from the Election Commission of India arrived in Sri Lanka Srinagar for a 3-day visit to Jammu and Kashmir. The purpose of the visit is to assess and review the preparations for the upcoming Lok Sabha polls in the region. During an encounter near Ambedkar College in North East Delhi the police uh, injured and apprehended three members of the Harshim Baba gang in we are uh, the police two police officers sustained minor injuries during the gunfight near Gokulpuri metro station farmers in Haveri staged a protest outside the agricultural produce market committee office in Byadigi district setting at least three vehicles on fire The demonstration was fueled by increasing frustration of the sudden drop in chili prices in Karnataka. <coughs> National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Monday called on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and discussed the ongoing war against Hamas in Gaza. The meeting also focused on efforts to release hostages and provide humanitarian assistance. <coughs> The Asian Institute of uh, Nephrology and Urology conducted a kidney run in Chennai ahead of the World Kidney Day. The awareness marathon was organized in an effort to raise awareness on kidney health. The marathon spanning around 5 kilometers saw participation of over 600 people. It was flagged off by actor Santosh Pratap. Take a look at this report. This is a great occasion. Ainu has done a wonderful service uh, by raising awareness on kidney health, and AGNP finds it uh, responsible for spreading this message across the country, across the citizens. The theme of this year is mainly focused on reducing the number of level of medicines that people are taking. Over the years, we have found that uh, patients, a lot of people, are taking unnecessary medicines without even the knowledge of why they are taking it for. So we need this year's focus is on to reduce the number of medicines people are taking at the same time to create an awareness on how to keep your kidneys healthy. I'm glad that doctors are coming up. Like you know, um, usually you will be seeing them in hospital, but you can see all the doctors here being active on a social cause. Um, so I think it's a great start, and people who are participating it, uh, pa- participating in it, and uh, people who are support. like all the sponsors over here kidney health and kidney ailments is something that you know awareness should be more spread about a uh, lot of us speak about uh, the importance of kidneys but very rarely do we know why it functions and how it functions and the kind of problems we uh, face if it doesn't function properly mere sahyogi और गुजरात प्रदेश भारतीय जनता पार्टी के अध्यक्ष श्रीमान सी आर पाटिल और देश के कोने कोने से जुड़े सभी गवर्नर श्री आदरणीय मुख्यमंत्री गण सांसद गण विधायक गण मंत्री गण और मैं स्क्रीन पर देख रहा हूं मेरे सामने 
700 से ज्यादा स्थान पर वहां के सांसद के नेतृत्व में वहां के मंत्री के नेतृत्व में लाखों लोग आज इस कार्यक्रम में जुड़े हैं शायद रेलवे के इतिहास में एक साथ हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने में इतना बड़ा कार्यक्रम कभी नहीं हुआ होगा सौ साल में पहली बार हुआ यह कार्यक्रम होगा मैं रेलवे को भी इस भव्य आयोजन के लिए बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं विकसित भारत के लिए हो रहे नव निर्माण का लगातार विस्तार हो रहा है देश के कोने कोने में परियोजनाओं का लोकार्पण हो रहा है नई योजनाएं शुरू हो रही है अगर मैं साल 2024 की ही बात करूं 2024 जाने मुश्किल से अभी 75 दिन हुए हैं 2024 के इन करीब करीब 75 दिन में 11 लाख करोड़ रुपए से ज्यादा की परियोजनाओं का लोकार्पण और शिलान्यास हो चुका है और अगर मैं पिछले 10-12 दिन की बात करूं पिछले 10-12 दिन में ही 7 लाख करोड़ रुपए से ज्यादा की परियोजनाओं का लोकार्पण और शिलान्यास हुआ है आज भी विकसित भारत की दिशा में देश ने एक बहुत बड़ा कदम उठाया इस कार्यक्रम में अभी यहां एक लाख करोड़ रुपए से ज्यादा की परियोजनाओं का और लोकार्पण और शिलान्यास हुआ है और आप देखिए आज 85,000 करोड़ रुपए पचासी हजार करोड़ रुपए से अधिक से सिर्फ और सिर्फ रेलवे के प्रोजेक्ट देश को मिले हैं और इसके उपरांत समय का अभाव रहता है मुझे विकास में मैं गति को धीमी नहीं होने देना चाहता और इसलिए आज रेलवे के ही कार्यक्रम में एक और कार्यक्रम जुड़ गया है पेट्रोलियम वालों का और दहेज में गुजरात में दहेज में बीस हजार करोड़ रुपए से अधिक की लागत से बनने वाले पेट्रो केमिकल परिसर परिसर का भी शिलान्यास हुआ है और ये प्रोजेक्ट हाइड्रोजन उत्पादन के साथ साथ देश में पॉलीप्रोपलिन की डिमांड को पूरा करने में अहम भूमिका निभाने वाला है आज ही गुजरात और महाराष्ट्र में एकता मॉल्स का भी शिलान्यास हुआ है ये एकता मॉल्स भारत के समृद्ध कुटीर उद्योग हमारे हस्तशिल्प हमारा वोकल फॉर लोकल का जो मिशन है उसको देश के कोने कोने तक ले जाने में सहायक होगा और उसमें एक भारत श्रेष्ठ भारत की नींव को भी मजबूत होते हम देखेंगे मैं इन परियोजनाओं के लिए देशवासियों को बधाई देता हूं और मैं मेरे नौजवान साथियों से कहना चाहता हूं भारत एक युवा देश है बहुत बड़ी तादाद में युवा रहते हैं देश में मैं खास तौर पर मेरे युवा साथियों से कहना चाहता हूं आज जो लोकार्पण हुआ है वो आपके वर्तमान के लिए है और आज जो शिलान्यास हुआ है वो आपके उज्जवल भविष्य की गारंटी लेकर के आया है 
साथियों आजादी के बाद की सरकारों ने राजनीतिक स्वार्थ को जिस तरह प्राथमिकता दी और उसकी बहुत बड़ी शिकार भारतीय रेल रही है आप पिछले 2014 के पहले के 25-30 रेल बजट देख लीजिए रेल मंत्री देश की पार्लियामेंट में क्या बोलते थे हमारी फलानी ट्रेन का वहां स्टॉपेज दे देंगे वहां हम डिब्बे छह है तो आठ कर देंगे यानी रेलवे और मैं देख रहा था पार्लियामेंट में भी धप धप तालियां बजती थी यानी यही सोच रही थी कि स्टॉपेज मिला कि नहीं मिला ट्रेन वहां तक आती है मेरे स्टेशन तक आगे बढ़ी कि नहीं बढ़ी देखिए इक्कीसवीं सदी में यही सोच रही होती तो देश का क्या होता और मैंने पहला काम किया रेल को अलग बजट से निकाल करके भारत सरकार के बजट में डाल दिया और उसके कारण आज भारत सरकार के बजट के पैसे रेलवे के विकास के लिए लगने लगे पिछले दिनों देखा है इन दशकों में समय की पाबंदी आपने हालत देखा है यार ट्रेन पर मेन लोग ये नहीं देखने जाते थे किस प्लेटफॉर्म पर कौन सी ट्रेन है लोग ये देखते हैं कितनी लेट है यही कार्यक्रम है को घर से क्योंकि उस समय मोबाइल तो था नहीं स्टेशन पे जाकर के देखना कि भाई कितनी लेट है रिश्तेदारों को कहते भाई रुके रहो पता नहीं ट्रेन कब आएगी वरना घर वापस जाकर के फिर आएंगे ये रहता था स्वच्छता की समस्या सुरक्षा सहूलियत हर कीच पैसेंजर के नसीब पर छोड़ दी गई थी 2014 में देश में आज से 10 साल पहले नॉर्थ ईस्ट के छह राज्यों ऐसे थे जहां की राजधानी हमारे देश की रेलवे से नहीं जुड़ी थी 2014 में देश में 10,000 से ज्यादा ऐसे रेल फाटक थे 10,000 से ज्यादा जहां कोई व्यक्ति नहीं था लगातार एक्सीडेंट होते थे और उसके कारण हमारे होनहार बच्चों को नौजवानों को हमें खोना पड़ता था 2014 में देश में सिर्फ 35 परसेंट रेल लाइनों का इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन हुआ था पहले की सरकारों के लिए रेल लाइनों का दोहरीकरण भी उनकी प्राथमिकता में ही नहीं था now it's time for the nation's sharpest opinion big story today prime minister narendra modi announced the first successful flight test of the agni 5 missile ladies and gentlemen this beauty is bharat's most lethal missile it's an icbm the agni 5 is equipped with multiple independently targetable reentry vehicle technology or the very high end very sophisticated mirv technology and let me explain to you what that means this is our most lethal weapon because it is capable of carrying multiple warheads and each of the warheads have the ability to launch targeted precision strikes on separate locations on any country soil The technology deployed is far more advanced than the traditional ballistic missiles which can only carry a single warhead. This is generally believed globally now. Ab railway ka vikas sarva sarkar ki sarvoccha prathmikataon mein se ek hai. Humne 10 varsho mein ausat rail budget ko 2014 से पहले की तुलना में छह गुना ज्यादा बढ़ाया है और मैं आज देश को यह गारंटी दे रहा हूं कि अगले पांच साल में वो भारतीय रेल का ऐसा कार्यकल्प होते देखेंगे जिसकी उन्होंने कल्पना भी नहीं की होगी आज का ये दिन 
इसी इच्छा शक्ति का जीता जागता सबूत है देश का नौजवान तय करेगा उसको कैसा देश चाहिए कैसी रेल चाहिए ये दस साल का काम अभी तो ट्रेलर है मुझे तो और आगे जाना है आज गुजरात महाराष्ट्र यूपी उत्तराखंड कर्नाटक तमिलनाडु दिल्ली एमपी तेलंगाना आंध्र प्रदेश बिहार झारखंड पश्चिम बंगाल उड़ीसा इतने राज्यों में वंदे भारत ट्रेनें मिल चुकी है जी और इसी के साथ ही देश में वंदे भारत ट्रेन की सेवाओं का शतक भी लग गया है वंदे भारत ट्रेनों का नेटवर्क अब देश के 250 से अधिक जिलों तक पहुंच चुका है जन भावनाओं का सम्मान करते हुए सरकार वंदे भारत ट्रेनों का रूट भी लगातार बढ़ा रही है अहमदाबाद जामनगर वंदे भारत ट्रेन अब द्वारिका तक जाएगी और मैं तो अभी अभी द्वारिका में जाकर के डुबकी लगा के आया हूं अजमेर दिल्ली सराय रोहिल्ला वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस अब चंडीगढ़ तक जाएगी गोरखपुर लखनऊ वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस अब प्रयागराज तक जाएगी और इस बार तो कुंभ का मेला होने वाला है तो उसका महत्व और बढ़ जाएगा तिरुअनंतपुरम कासरगोड वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस मंगलुरु तक विस्तार किया गया है साथियों हम दुनिया भर में कहीं भी देखें जो देश समृद्ध हुए औद्योगिक रूप से सक्षम हुए उनमें रेलवे की बहुत बड़ी भूमिका रही है इसलिए रेलवे का कायाकल्प भी विकसित भारत की गारंटी है आज रेलवे में अभूतपूर्व गति से रिफॉर्म हो रहे हैं तेज गति से नए रेलवे ट्रैक्स का निर्माण 1300 से ज्यादा रेलवे स्टेशनों का आधुनिकरण वंदे भारत नमो भारत अमृत भारत जैसी नेक्स्ट जनरेशन ट्रेन आधुनिक रेलवे इंजन और कोच फैक्ट्रिया ये सब 21वीं सदी की भारतीय रेल की तस्वीर बदल रही है साथियों गति शक्ति कार्गो टर्मिनल पॉलिसी के तहत कार्गो टर्मिनल के निर्माण में गति लाई जा रही है इसे कार्गो टर्मिनल बनने की गति तेज हुई है लैंड लीजिंग पॉलिसी को और सरल किया गया है लैंड लीजिंग प्रक्रिया को भी ऑनलाइन किया है इससे काम में पारदर्शिता आई है देश के ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सेक्टर को मजबूती देने के लिए रेलवे मंत्रालय के तहत गतिशक्ति विश्वविद्यालय की स्थापना भी की गई है हम निरंतर भारतीय रेल को आधुनिक बनाने और देश के कोने कोने को रेल से जुड़ने में जुटे हुए हैं हम रेलवे से नेटवर्क से मानव रहित फाटक समाप्त करके ऑटोमेटिक सिग्नलिंग सिस्टम लगा रहे हैं हम रेलवे के शत प्रतिशत इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन की तरफ बढ़ रहे हैं हम सौर ऊर्जा से चलने वाले स्टेशन बना रहे हैं हम स्टेशन पर सस्ती दवा वाले जन औषधि केंद्र बना रहे हैं और साथियों ये ट्रेनें ये पटरिया ये स्टेशन ही नहीं बन रहे बल्कि इनसे मेड इन इंडिया का एक पूरा इकोसिस्टम बन रहा है देश में बने लोकोमोटिव हो या ट्रेन के डिब्बे हो भारत से श्रीलंका मोजाम्बिक सेनेगल म्यांमार सूडान जैसे देशों तक हमारे ये प्रोडक्ट एक्सपोर्ट किए जा रहे हैं
Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Amit Shah said it to me on the 7th of March. And tonight the breaking news is that the Citizenship Amendment Act the CAA has been notified. I welcome it wholeheartedly. And in this time I want to begin by saying that we must not give in. We must not give in this time to the Shaheen Bagh type polarizing threats. And we must not allow, we must not allow anyone to spread the falsehood that a few persecuted Hindus, a few terrorized Buddhists, a few persecuted Sikhs, and a few persecuted Christians from Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, where they are persecuted, where they are terrorized, that their coming to India will put Indian secularism at risk. I say on the contrary tonight that it will not. India is not for Rohingyas. This channel will say it as clearly as that. India is not for the Bangladeshi illegal infiltrators who have entered in millions over the decades. And in Indian states, especially the state of Assam, where तो मालगाड़ियां और पैसेंजर ट्रेन दोनों की स्पीड बढ़ती ये खेती उद्योग एक्सपोर्ट व्यापार कारोबार हर काम के लिए ये तेजी लाने आप बहुत जरूरी था लेकिन कांग्रेस के राज में ये प्रोजेक्ट लटकता रहा भटकता रहा अटकता रहा बीते दस वर्षों में पूर्व और पश्चिम के समुद्री तट को जोड़ने वाला ये फ्रेट कॉरिडोर करीब करीब पूरा हो चुका है आज करीब साढ़े छह किलोमीटर फ्रेट कॉरिडोर का लोकार्पण हुआ है अहमदाबाद में ये अभी आप देख रहे हैं ऑपरेशन कंट्रोल सेंटर का लोकार्पण हुआ है सरकार के प्रयासों से अब इस कॉरिडोर पर माल गाड़ी की स्पीड दो गुना से अधिक हो गई है इन कॉरिडोर पर अभी के मुकाबले बड़े वैगन को चलने की क्षमता है जिनमें हम अधिक सामान ले जा सकते हैं पूरे फ्रेड कॉरिडोर पर अब इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर भी विकसित किए जा रहे हैं आज अनेक स्थानों पर रेलवे गुड सेड गतिशक्ति मल्टी मॉडल कार्गो टर्मिनल डिजिटल नियंत्रण स्टेशन रेलवे वर्कशॉप रेलवे लोको शेड रेलवे डिपो का भी लोकार्पण आज हुआ है इसका भी बहुत सकारात्मक प्रभाव माल डुलाई पर पड़ने ही वाला है साथियों भारतीय रेल को हम आत्मनिर्भर भारत का भी एक नया माध्यम बना रहे हैं मैं वोकल फॉर लोकल का प्रचारक हूं तो भारतीय रेल वोकल फॉर लोकल का एक सशक्त माध्यम है हमारे विश्वकर्मा साथियों हमारे कारीगरों शिल्पकारों महिला स्वयं समूहों के स्थानीय उत्पाद अब स्टेशन पर बिकेंगे अभी तक रेलवे स्टेशनों पर वन स्टेशन वर्ग प्रोडक्ट के 1500 स्टॉल खुल चुके हैं इसका लाभ हमारे हजारों गरीब भाई बहनों को हो रहा है साथियों मुझे खुशी है कि भारतीय रेलवे आज विरासत भी विकास भी इस मंत्र को साकार करते हुए क्षेत्रीय संस्कृति और आस्था से जुड़े पर्यटन को भी बढ़ावा दे रही है आज देश में रामायण सर्किट गुरु कृपा सर्किट जैन यात्रा पर गौरव भारत गौरव ट्रेनें चल रही है यही नहीं आस्था स्पेशल ट्रेन तो देश के कोने से से श्री राम भक्तों को 
अयोध्या तक ले जा रही है अब तक करीब 350 सौ पचास आस्था ट्रेनें चली हैं और इनके माध्यम से साढ़े चार लाख से ज्यादा श्रद्धालुओं ने अयोध्या में रामलला के दर्शन किए साथियों भारतीय रेल आधुनिकता की रफ्तार पर ऐसे ही तेजी से आगे बढ़ती रहेगी और ये मोदी की गारंटी है सभी दासवासियों के सहयोग से विकास का ये उत्सव भी निरंतर जारी रहेगा एक बार फिर मैं सभी मुख्यमंत्रियों का गवर्नर सी का और इन सात सौ से अधिक स्थान पर जो इतनी बड़ी तादाद में लोग खड़े बैठे हैं कार्यक्रम में आए हैं और सुबह नौ साढ़े नौ बजे ये कार्यक्रम करना कोई सरल काम नहीं है लेकिन देश का जनमानस विकास के साथ जुड़ गया है और इसीलिए ये नजारा देखने को मिल रहा है जो इतनी बड़ी तादाद में आज आए हैं इस कार्यक्रम में शरीक हुए सात सौ से अधिक जिलों में ये विकास की एक नई लहर उनको अनुभव हो रही है मैं आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं और मैं आप सबकी विदाई लेता हूं नमस्कार माननीय प्रधानमंत्री महोदय आपके प्रेरणादायक संबोधन के लिए और राइट सो मेजर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पुश बींग सीन इन गुजरात द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इनोग्रेटिंग द वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस ट्रेन other news then uh, the asian institute of nephrology and urology conducted a kidney run in chennai ahead of uh, the world kidney day the awareness marathon was organized in an effort to raise awareness on kidney health the marathon spanning around 5 kilometers saw participation of more than 600 people and was flagged off by actor santosh pratap this is a great occasion i know has done a wonderful service uh, by raising awareness on kidney health and agnp finds it uh, responsible for spreading this message across the country across the citizens the theme of this year is mainly focused on reducing the number of level of medicines that people are taking over the years we have found that uh, patients a lot of people are taking unnecessary medicines without even the knowledge of why they are taking it for so we need this year's focus is on to reduce the number of medicines people are taking at the same time to create an awareness on how to keep your kidneys healthy i'm glad that doctors are coming up like you know um, usually you will be seeing them in hospital but you can see all the doctors here being active on a social cause um, so i think it's a great start and people who are participating it uh, participating in it and uh, people who are support like all the sponsors over here kidney health and kidney ailments is something that you know awareness should be more spread about a uh, lot of us speak about uh, the importance of kidneys but very rarely do we know why it functions and how it functions and the kind of problems we uh, face if it doesn't function properly All right, moving on to our top focus. Then, uh, just days ahead of the announcement of general elections, uh, the Ministry of uh, Home Affairs has notified the FID the Citizenship Amendment Rules 2024 that would enable the implementation of Citizenship Amendment Act that was passed by the Parliament in 2019. Uh, the opposition has called it nothing but a political gimmick, and saying uh, this is uh, nothing but an attempt to divide the people of the country. the center has declared that citizenship amendment act 2019 is being imposed all over the country including assam we were demanding that citizenship amendment act 2019 should not be implemented in assam as we have assam accord which has given safeguard to assamese people and who is says that those people from uh, other country who entered assam or india up to 24th march 1971 will be indian citizens and they can stay in assam however 
this new citizenship amendment act will now allow anyone coming to assam or india up to 2014 31st december to become indian citizen to stay in assam to buy land to buy property and enjoy all facilities this is against the assam accord which was accepted by all people of assam in 1985 when it was signed by all assam students union all assam ganasangam parishad with the central government See, already the uh, act is uh, opposed by all political parties, both in uh, within the parliament and uh, outside the parliament. Uh, tremendous op opposition was shown by all opposition political parties and various organizations throughout the country because it is total discriminatory act and uh, unconstitutional act. Because citizenship uh, is uh, government is trying to give citizenship on the basis of uh, religion, which is not permissible un under provisions of Indian constitution. Shifty focus to source-based information that is coming in from the state of Haryana, where Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar is likely to resign as uh, the Chief Minister. Uh, leaders uh, Nayab Saini or Sanjay Bhatia could replace him for the Chief Minister post. So this is uh, a source-based information that is just trickling in. Manohar Lal Khattar could uh, step down from his post as the Chief Minister of the state. Uh, Tarun Chok and Arjun Munda have already left for Chandigarh is what sources tell Republic. Uh, so that resignation is very much on the cards as per breaking uh, inputs that are just trickling in. So uh, a major reject that is expected just ahead of the Lok Sabha elections as Manohar Lal Khattar could be resigning from the post of Chief Minister. All right, we have Harsha who's getting us the details. Harsha, uh, a major reject that is expected, but any reason that you're learning of from your sources as to what is the reason uh, for that resignation if it does happen of uh, Manohar Lal Khattar as the Chief Minister of Haryana? So right now we have got to know from Iksha that Manohar Lal Khattar likely to contest Lok Sabha election and Manohar Lal Khattar has expressed uh, his intention to the BJP High Command as well and that is the reason why observers Sarun Chug and Arjun Munda have immediately left for Chandigarh and they will be reaching Chandigarh uh, between 12 to 1 o'clock and a very high level meeting and the way in Chandigarh, uh, Chandigarh also we have got to know that right now the observers are being sent to Chandigarh First, they will be speaking to Manohar Lal Khattar and likely will be convincing him also not to resign from his post till the uh, Haryana elections, which are likely later in this year, that is September, Haryana Assembly election. But before Lok Sabha election, this major change is what we could see in Haryana and there are two front runners also. If Manohar Lal Khattar resigns from the post of CM, there are two major front runners, Sanjay Bhatia and also uh, uh, Nayab Saini and also this could be a dark Safe now if a CM is to be changed in Haryana. But right now what we have got to know that after observers will reach to Haryana, then a major high-level meeting will happen with all the MLAs and the observers. But a major change of the power could be seen in Haryana. Yesterday there was a meeting of Dushan Sotala and JP Nadja also regarding alliance and we have got to know that some some uh, camps in Haryana are really upset with the CM and that is the reason why just before Lok Sabha election to also uh, to also make uh, to also make the voters understand the change could happen but we have got to know that so many movements and developments will take place in Haryana in Chandigarh in another one or two days but today a high level meeting has been called where observers will be meeting all the MLAs in Chandigarh and also Manohar Lal Khattar will be present there but this is from the top sources that Manohar Lal Khattar is likely to resign as CM of Haryana and also there are several names who are the front runners in the days of chief ministers in Haryana. Back to you. Harsha, stay with us. Just one last question. We understand that tensions have been brewing in the JGP-BJP alliance for quite some time in Haryana. If you can give us details, one on that and more on the meeting that we understand has been called by Dushyan Shautala at uh, around 11 a.m. in the national capital. 
Rightly stated, Samisha, yesterday Dushan Chutala met JP Nadda. The talk of alliance can go, can go in fray because we have got to know that Dushan Chutala has been asking for two seats in Haryana for the Lok Sabha election, which is Hisar and Bhivani. Although there are more than two seats which Dushan Chutala has expressed his intention to contest from, that his party would be contesting. But right now, BJP is not ready to give these two, two seats to JJP for the Lok Sabha elections, which is Hisar and Bhivani. And that is the reason why also news is there that Dushan Chotala could, could break his alliance with BJP and contest in all the 10 seats of Haryana alone. And yesterday after meeting JP Nadda, no statement came from Dushan's side of the Dushan Chotala deputy CM. And yesterday night, the major speculation rose after Dushan Chotala didn't attend the meeting where Haryana CM Manohar Lal Khattar called the meeting of all the MLAs. And Dushan Chotala was also called for the meeting, but he skipped the meeting. And that meeting and that news uh, gave rise to the speculation speculation that the alliance could break off and right now we are learning is that in Delhi the meeting of all the MLAs of JJP has been called by Dushan Chotala he will be meeting all the MLAs here in Delhi and also Amit Shah he will be meeting we have got to know that Dushan Chotala shortly would be leaving from his residence and will be reaching to the residence of HM Amit Shah before Lok Sabha election this is very important that both BJP and JJP stick together in assembly we know that there's an alliance between JJP and BJP on one side NDA is NDA is speaking to all the uh, uh, to all the parties who earlier left NDA but now uh, no process is there all the parties should come back to NDA but with JJP things could grow uh, the things could go in another way because uh, Dushan Chotala seems to be very adamant and reluctant not to leave Hisar and Bhivani seat yesterday meeting went on for more than one hour with JP Nadda and today again Dushan Chotala will be meeting HM Amit Shah and also his party MLAs have been called to Delhi all the JJP JP MLAs will be reaching national capital and a meeting will happen between 1 to 2 p.m. Back to you. Right, so marathon meetings taking place in the national capital. But Harsha, stay with us. If that uh, breakup does happen, that is the JGP and the BJP in the state of Haryana, uh, help us understand, could it really have a bearing on the general elections, so as to say? Yes, uh, yes, Amisha, it will have a huge impact in Lok Sabha and Assembly elections both. In Assembly elections, we know that there is an alliance with uh, with JJP and uh, and, and the JJP and BJP are in power. This Dushan Chotala is the dip TCM. But in order to in order to maintain the JAT voters and not let them go into the Congress camp, it's very important that both JJP and BJP stick together. If if it doesn't go as well, then the benefit could happen. The, the, the benefit could uh, be taken by the Congress party and that that is what we have seen the shift of so many developments after Birendra Singh, the former minister and the very important JAT leader from Hisar, has joined Congress party. He was earlier in Congress, he then came to BJP, became the minister. He is a very prominent face in the Hisar SM, in the Hisar Lok Sabha constituency. And the breakup between JJP and BJP could be a major loss for BJP and several seats in Haryana where JAT voters are in huge number. And that is the reason why BJP wants to keep their vote intact and that is the reason several talks between Dushan Chotala and BJP senior leaders is continuously happening but things between CM and Ditti CM are not at all well and we can say right now that all is not well in Haryana and that is the reason why immediately observers from Delhi have been asked to immediately move to Haryana, move to Chandigarh and speak to Manohar Lal Khattar and other MLAs because now if the CM is to be changed it is going to be a jarred face as front runner Jart faced the CM of Haryana, which could be beneficial for BJP in both Lok Sabha and Assembly as well. We know that there are 10 seats of uh, 10 Lok Sabha, constitu 10 Lok Sabha uh, constituencies in Haryana. BJP has right now in 2019 won all the 10 seats, but this time it seems to be very difficult if JJP breaks off the alliance. So all the eyes will be on Dushan Chotala's meeting with Amit Shah. Whether Amit Shah and Dushan Chotala's meeting if goes well, then this alliance alliance could sustain but if the BJP will be adamant on not giving seats to JJP of Hisar, Bhivani and Mahindargarh then this alliance could break off. So we have to keep a close watch exactly what is going to be developments in national capital today. Back to you. Right, Harsha, thank you for the moment. So a lot happening in Haryana politics, uh, speculations rife that uh, that alliance between JJP and BJP could also nearing its end. Uh, we will keep, uh, closely keep a tab on those uh, those developments. Uh, for now, a quick roundup of news and brief from across the country.
Awaited second list of candidates for the BJP is anticipated uh, to be officially released today following the second and ostensibly conclusive meeting of the Central Election Committee that was held late last night in presence of Prime Minister and other senior leaders. Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar, accompanied by a team of approximately a dozen officials from the Election Commission of India, arrived in Srinagar for a three-day visit to JNK. The purpose of the visit is to assess and review the preparations for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. During an encounter near Ambedkar College in Northeast Delhi, the police uh, injured and apprehended three members of Hashim Baba gang in wee hours. Uh, two police officers even sustained minor injuries during the gunfight near Gokulpuri metro station in the national capital. Farmers in Haveri staged a protest outside the Agricultural Produce Market uh, Committee office in Biadgiri district, setting at least three vehicles on fire. The demonstration was fueled by increased frustration over sudden drop in chili prices across the state. National Security Advisor Aji Duval on Monday called on Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and discussed the ongoing war against discussed the ongoing war against Hamas uh, in Gaza. The meeting also focused on efforts to release hostages and provide humanitarian assistance to people in Gaza. Alright, on that note, we are heading into a very short break. On the other side, uh, we will get you the latest on the BJP CEC meet that was held late last night. Uh, announcement likely of the second list uh, candidates uh, today itself. And BJP Central Election Commission meets for the second time. More than that, on the other side of the break. Now it's time for the nation's sharpest opinion. Big story today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the first successful flight test of the Agni-5 missile. Ladies and gentlemen, this beauty is Bharat's most lethal missile. It's an ICBM. The Agni-5 is equipped with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle technology or the very high-end, very sophisticated MIRV technology. And let me explain to you what that means. This is our most lethal weapon because it is capable of carrying multiple warheads. And each of the warheads have the ability to launch targeted precision strikes on separate locations on any country's soil. The technology deployed is far more advanced than the traditional ballistic missiles which can only carry a single warhead. This is generally believed globally now to be one of the most lethal warheads. And with this indigenous achievement, Bharat and DRDO have entered an elite and very select club of nations and organizations who have successfully developed these advanced missile systems. The US, France, Britain, Russia and China are among the few who have done it. Now, while there is no official range ascribed to it, the capability is said to have a range of about 5,000 kilometers, which means that the Agni-5 can bring almost all of Asia in its striking range, including the northern belts of China. And it is a matter of huge pride, ladies and gentlemen, that we have achieved it on our own, indigenously, on our own and I have always said as we move to a 5 and 10 trillion economy with the highest growth rates in the world we must have a very very strong lethal military capability matching or more than China look at the strategic capability that this adds to the prowess of our sophisticated defense systems 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a new level of preparedness that India has for a new kind of warfare which we are preparing for. Because the technology which is being used in the Agni 5 is for the preparedness of striking multiple targets at once exactly in consonance with what we saw in December when we tested the same system on the Akash missile. What are we doing here, viewers? We as a country are increasing many fold our strategic depth, our geopolitical depth, our military and defence capability, our offensive and defensive positions. There is a thought out pattern to what is going on, ladies and gentlemen. There is a loaded strategic preparedness in the works. That is what it is telling me. The Agni 5 not only arms us, the Agni 5 complicates it for our enemies. Because this missile can penetrate ballistic missile defences through acts of deceit. Through high speed entry and re-entry and simultaneous strikes, which means that the entire threat matrix in any situation can be conquered, whether the enemy is singular or multiple. <coughs> you can have multiple targets, multiple geographies. The multiple warheads capability is also a solid siren and a warning to China and Pakistan in any situation, in any era of time, that if they even think of joining hands against Bharat, with the Agni 5 in our fold, China's miss. The wait is over as the ECI team is in the Kashmir Valley and this is going to be the three-day visit of ECI team to Jammu and Kashmir. Today they have reached here at the Hotel Lilith and where they will be staying here and then tomorrow the goal post will be at SKICC where they will be meeting the political leaders, the stakeholders to know about the situation in Jammu and Kashmir because the political parties have been demanding long for the long time that the Lok Sabha polls and the Assembly's polls should be held together. There have been the questions that have been raised by the political parties that if government can hold parliament polls, why not the assembly polls? Why there is a delay? Recently, there has been also directions from the Supreme Court to the government that to hold the assembly elections. Jammu and Kashmir is not, it did not have the elections since 2018 and since then we have been seeing the president's rule. Although we are seeing that tomorrow there will be, they will be meeting the political leaders, they will also be meeting the stakeholders and meanwhile a ECI team is to review the preparations for the upcoming parliamentary polls. Here with BJ Mubashir Hussain, I'm Zinad Zishan Fazal for Republic in Srinagar. And uh, with that, we are heading into a short break. Coming up on live and breaking uh, the latest on CAA rollout by the central government. All out politics uh, a day after centre announces notification on CAA. Good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Amit Shah said it to me on the 7th of March. And tonight, the breaking news is that the Citizenship Amendment Act, the CAA, has been notified. I welcome it wholeheartedly. And in this time, I want to begin by saying that we must not give in. We must not give in this time to the Shaheen Bagh type polarizing threats. And we must not allow, we must not allow anyone to spread the falsehood that a few persecuted Hindus, a few terrorized Buddhists, a few persecuted Sikhs, and a few persecuted Christians from Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, where they are persecuted, where they are terrorized, that their coming to India will put Indian secularism at risk. I say on the contrary tonight that it will not. India is not for Rohingyas. This channel will say it as clearly as that. India is not for the Bangladeshi illegal infiltrators who have entered in millions over the decades. And in Indian states, especially the state of Assam, where I am from, especially the state of Bengal, robbed Indians of their own soil, their own security and their own ethnic identity. India is not for them. Then you'll ask me if it is not for them, why should it be for a few persecuted Hindus? <coughs> if Muslims are not allowed to come to India from Pakistan and from Bangladesh and from Afghanistan, why should Hindus be allowed? If Muslims are not allowed to come from Bangladesh, why should 
Buddhists be allowed? Why should Christians be allowed? Are not all religions not equal? Well, I believe all religions are equal. But can any of the people spreading that rubbish look at me eye to eye and say Muslims are per persecuted in Bangladesh for their religion? Are Muslims persecuted in Afghanistan for their religion? Does the Taliban target Muslims for being Muslims? Are Muslims being persecuted in Pakistan? And if they are not, what kind of Manishankar Iyer argument is this? It's ridiculous. So India is not for those people, but India is for people who have been subject to massacres, rapes and systematic atrocities in neighboring countries. And I am before you tonight to say that we must, without a single explanation, step forward for them. We must make them believe that we are on their side. We must make them believe that we feel for them. Viewers, last time, and I mean when I take the clock back to 2020, last time when Shaheen Bagh and all happened, you may not have known the details of CA, so you would have been misled. You may not have been, you may have been completely ignorant. When you heard the OACs and the Congress party say that Muslims are going to be targeted and lose their identity, you may have believed it, but you may have fallen prey to all this systematic misinformation then. And the misinformation was that Muslims will lose their identity. But then since then, have you not seen OAC cornered after that? Have you not seen that couple Sibyl? That couple Sibyl. Cornered after that? You have... You have seen them effectively admit that they lied, effectively admit they lied. So this time, my only request to you is on top of my program, don't be taken by their lies. Believe me, I have no interest in this. I'm on your side, I'm on the nation's side. Believe in what I'm telling you. And what I'm telling you is that if we are people with a conscience and a heart, sit around in your drawing rooms tonight. Top headlines at half past 10, uh, its official centre announces CAA implementation just weeks ahead of polls sets up portal for registration. Political slugfest over CAA rollout, opposition questions, timing of move calls it a poll gimmick ahead of the grand finale. BJP finalizes Andhra Pradesh uh, packed out of total 25 Lok Sabha seats, TDP to contest on 17 seats, BJP 6 and Jan Sena party on 2 seats. BJP Central Election Committee meets for the second time. Sources say the second list of candidates to be out in the next 48 hours. Reports say a first batch of Indian military personnel manning operations of helicopter in Maldives depart from island nation move comes after Maldivian President's May 10th ultimatum. Very good morning. It's half past 10. We are live and breaking. I'm Samiksha Srivastava. Our top focus remains the CAA rollout notification that was put out by this, uh, the Union Home Ministry just yesterday. In fact, note all out politics that has now erupted over the CAA implementation. In fact, in the latest, we understand that the Muslim League has now uh, decided to move top court, opposing the implementation of uh, the CAA by the central government. So, all-out politics that has now erupted uh, with the Muslim League now in the latest, uh, having decided to move top court. And all of this when uh, the central government has uh, notified on CAA rollout. So, other... The center has declared the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 is being imposed all over the country, including Assam. We were demanding that Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 should not be implemented in Assam 
else we have assam accord which has given safeguard to assamese people and which says that those people from uh, other country who entered assam or india up to 24th march 1971 will be indian citizens and they can stay in assam however this new citizenship amendment act will now allow anyone coming to assam or india up to 2014 31 december to become indian All right, to the news break that's just coming in uh, related to the CAA. Muslim League has decided to move top court, seeking a stay on CAA rollout. In fact, that's a statement also that's come in from uh, the National General Secretary of the Muslim League, who says, uh, who's rather signed this affidavit uh, to be filed in the top court. It will even hold an emergency leadership meeting uh, today itself to assess uh, the situation. so it's uh, not just the muslim league as we understand in fact the iuml will also file application uh, it's the muslim league i beg your pardon that uh, would file an application in the top court on implementation on ucc in the uh, in the country according to sources the petition will state that the government had earlier opposed the ban saying they, that there would be no immediate implementation as rules had not been made uh, back then so caa showdown which continues uh, the muslim league to move top court opposing uh, the ucc rollout by the central government an emergency meet that has also been called by uh, the muslim league uh, to discuss the caa issue note that the primary argument here being made by the iuml is that uh, what the iuml claims that caa is unconstitutional and discriminatory against muslims all right uh, so that is uh, the news break that is coming in this hour muslim league uh, to move top court let's go across to akil who's joining us live from outside uh, the jamia university we have gursimran also who's joining us from jammu uh, akil to you first we understand that the muslim league has decided to move top court uh, meanwhile security has also been heightened at the jamia university take us to what you see up uh, through what you see around you and also the reactions that are coming in from dis- different muslim bodies at this point Well, right now we are just standing outside Jamia campus, and here you can see I would like to request by Vijay to show you the visual of the ground situation over here. Here, rapid action force have been deployed. Delhi police team have been deployed over here. Apart from that, if you see, so there are three companies of rapid action force that has been deployed over here, which includes Alpha 103 unit. Charlie 108 unit and Delta 108 unit. So, uh, what we have been told by the senior officials from Delhi Police that all the necessary arrangements are done over here to maintain law and order situation. And strict action will be taken against those who will try to disrupt law and order situation. So, right now, if you see the ground situation over here, what we have been told by Delhi Police officials that uh, they will jointly start a flag march over here. Uh, With, uh, with the R- uh, rapid action force team, the RAF team. So the RAF team and Delhi police, uh, Delhi police team will jointly start uh, a flag march operation in some time uh, over here. Yes, Samiksha. Hmm. Uh, Akhil, uh, also, you know, it's we've seen that Jamia and uh, uh, as well as the JNU, they have been epicenters when we talk about the protests which have happened over the last few years. Uh, also, take us through the kind of security measures that are in place uh, in JNU as well, because we understand an advisory has also been issued uh, to maintain peace and order uh, in the university campus. Well, absolutely. Uh, strict vigilance is being kept at different campuses because these campuses uh, are the 